Hello on the Rockers. On this episode, Pride Month continues with Influencer Pride with People Magazine's sexiest guy of TikTok, Ian Padgett, is here uh, with ABC's On the Red Carpet and Plus Life Media personality, Carl Schmidt, and some Pride cocktails. Stop it. <laughs> And surprise cocktails by master mixologist and longtime entertainment host, by the way, Luke Barr is here. And me, your favorite host with the sassy most. Raise a glass and let the drinks begin. It's on the rocks. Cheers. Thank you for being. Wow. And life is a wow. And most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On The Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On The Rocks. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. My granddaughter. Beyond family. We're talking about Tippi Hedren and how she lived with lions over her own daughter, but that's another story. It's an interesting <laughs> name, Tippi. Sorry. It is, well... <laughs> After that episode she was on, she definitely she was. tipped it over. She spilled. She worked with Alfred Hitchcock, and she was in Charlie Chaplin's last film that he directed. Wow. So working with two greats like that, it's all in her book. Anyway, buttons and bows and pantyhose on The Rocks Podcast, place where I'm too glam to give a damn. I say this every year, and nobody ever listens to me. During Mother's Day, I see the most gorgeous pictures of everybody's mom, no matter the age. Gorgeous. Father's Day comes around. You're too busy buying your dad a mug or a tie. You need to be buying your dad some moisturizer, especially if he has a gay son or a gay grandson. What's the benefit if you're not going to tell him to moisturize? I see some dusty dads out there. Nobody's like, oh, how beautiful. They're like, that's your dad. Buy you, some lotion. You had to get that off your chest, didn't I you? I say it every it's year. It's been every year, bugging like, you like crazy. Because we all know, where, if we want to be honest, Mother's Day, it's like, oh, God, everybody's mom I is saw, so beautiful. No, that's not you fair. Know, I, I saw pictures of nice pictures with dads and things. I mean, I saw pictures of dads that weekend, but it that wasn't, wasn't a Father's real dad. Day. That was And that was another. It was Rocco Steele. Hi, Rocco. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like us on Twitter and Instagram, at On The Rocks On Air, and on Facebook, if you're still on Facebook, On The Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris, or an awful pride. Won't name names. Uh, I don't care. I will be there. Info at ontherocksradioshow.com. You can watch and or listen to. We are so close to 300 episodes, by the way. You can watch it or listen all for free at ontherocksradioshow.com or Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV on the Outed.tv app, Facebook Watch, again, if you're still on Facebook, streaming with pride on SVTV, and randomly, we're on Channel 31 on the East Coast four times a week. Wow. Lucky East Coast. That was like a CVS receipt right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not done. Uh, the show is oh, brought God. to you by FanDaddies.com, bringing you the sassiest and classiest of clacking hats and fans for prides, EDM parties, sassy selfies, and yes, even sci-fi nerds. Fan we, daddies. we designed a Star Trek clacking fan. Head to FanDaddies.com. We want to support our, our small businesses. Uh, we're going to talk about our other sponsor, Neft Vodka, but we're going to do that for real. One of our media sponsors, Ellie, sponsors, Ellie Parties, <laughs> setting the bar high with their LGBTQ events and parties they're coming to san diego pride for one epic weekend and are you hosting say, are you hosting that i will be there i'm not <laughs> sure what exactly i'll be doing okay. or how big my trailer is going to be but from <laughs> july 13th to 7th now that's the first question that's, I have to that's bigger than la pride so I mean, right? it's like food services no uh vodka and trailer that's what i need to know and how many backstage passes? Anyway, one epic weekend, pool parties, block parties, day parties, nightclub parties, rooftop parties, and parade parties. Um, head to LEParties.com. Fly into San Diego for this weekend. I know LE Parties, and they they pull out all the stops. Um, I'll be floating around there somewhere. Like, I'm sure I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. All right, let's get the show on the road. <laughs> uh, I will formally introduce our guest, uh, Ian Padgett, and guest co-host Carl Schmidt. But uh, before we talk about Hot Topics Pride... And breakups. Let's drink. Um, as our loyal listeners know, our shenanigans are fueled by Neft Vodka. It's just damn good vodka. Um, and I say this truthfully. I never have a hangover after a night of Neff Vodka. So that in itself is That's amazing. That's because you pour the Neff Vodka in everybody else's drinks but your own. Oh, believe me. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. And that's just the before party. Um, <laughs> we usually have to pour our own drinks ourselves. But today we have a treat in studio. Uh, we have a treat on the eyes, and a treat in your mouth. Oh, that sounded weird. Um, <coughs> he's straight. I liked straight. it. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> uh, Neft Vodka. Stro- What's that got to do with anything? Because a treat in your mouth. I was making a pride gay joke. Like <laughs> a sweet. Yeah. Well, somebody it. might find it a treat in their mouth. It just might not be a dude. 
<laughs> okay. And that's our show. Uh, <laughs> you invited me back here. I'm so excited. Uh, Nef Vodka has joined forces with master mixologist and longtime entertainment host Luke Barr. Uh, as part of its expansion into increasingly large and extravagant events and productions, uh, he joins Nef with nearly two decades of experience in the mixology industry Ooh. and has worked with some of Hollywood's greatest entertainers. These pictures, and you say is straight? This is, this is the photo of my introduction right I mean, oh, Girl, <laughs> our audience is like, I'm oh, saying. Yeah, save a motorcycle, oh, ride a Luke. Ride at your own <laughs> risk. He's worked and at Jennifer. It's a, and it's only a dollar a ride. <laughs> well, it's a little bit more. Um, uh, he's worked with Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, uh, Wilmer Valderrama, Ava Longoria, and Oprah Winfrey. Um, he began training under renowned mixologist Richard Swan, and he soon be began crafting these amazing cocktails uh, with reduction syrups and other concoctions that sometimes take weeks to make. He has consulted with about every large scale and most distinguished venues in the country, including Beverly Wilshire Hotel, The Four Seasons, and on and on. Um, he's also been involved in the entertainment industry, first serving as the youngest host to lead the nightly comedy performances for Disney Cruise Lines. I'm sure there's so many stories there. <laughs> uh, his additional in, uh, experience includes hosting a variety shows on networks such as OWN, Hallmark, NBC Universal Kids, and CMT. Please welcome Luke Bar. What an intro. What an intro. Now, did you change your name, Bar, just because of what you do? No, this is, okay, I've been asked Everybody this many, that, many right? times, all, all the time, but I think it's funny because my last name is B-A-R-R, -R, and, and they just thought highly of me just enough that I would change my name but not spell it right. <laughs> well, you are blonde. <laughs> yeah, this is right, this is true. And this it appears true. to be natural yeah, Well, from where I'm sitting. What's Jessica, left? Yeah, still... Jessica, does it everything match? Okay, it does. <laughs> it's a treat in your mouth. Now, fuck up. That's going to be the new barrel, by the way. Actually, that, that was actually the best segue, because our cocktail tonight is called this, the, the Kinsey, based on the Kinsey scale. Ooh. Because, because I think everyone's a little gay, everyone's a little straight, however you want to play it, That's right? That's exactly right. It's great. A lot of you know what? The sweat on his upper lip just came out even more when you said that. <laughs> it's actually my Botox leaking. It's been a long week. <laughs> um, but I love this. You know how we, we we're going to talk about this. Ian, we're going to talk about this, about how corporations Botox? grab onto pride. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. Uh, but how corporations grab onto pride. But I want to talk about a uh, reason we have Neft as a sponsor is because they are active in the community. And I want to talk about this pride barrel. Um, can you tell a little story behind the pride barrel? Oh, my gosh. I would love to. I, I love this story because it's it's personal to me. The, the artist that designed this barrel, a man named Paul Robinson, um, was a regular of mine at a bar in West Hollywood, sadly no longer there. Um, I'll say it. It was in it was in the neighborhood in Boys Town. What, what was the name? Yeah, what's the bar? Tortilla Republic. I don't know. I love Tortilla there. Republic. What? What? It's, that's it's so best. annoying that's that, that that's gone and that uh, it breaks the my best heart. happy hour. I will say and the Sunday not the brunch. best entrees, but the best bar, the best happy hour yes, ever. That's well, where you took you. your date, yes. and then you either moved on to the rest of the dinner or you moved on to somebody's and house. And before that, it was a sushi restaurant, and now mm. is isn't it what, isn't it going back to being a Japanese restaurant or something? I don't know. It just makes me sad to talk about it. That's sad. Such a great environment. Uh, really also talk about being involved in the community. Mm -hmm. It was such a great space where you could go and it wasn't like the thunka thunka Thank thunka you. of the right. Abbey. Yeah. You could have a conversation, have an elevated cocktail, mm -hmm. have that experience, see hot boys and still get that sexy experience. But mm. and brunch was really good there too. Well, I love I love brunch Sunday. there. <laughs> I'll take but yeah, the word for it. The, the I'm cocktail I'm going to make tonight is, is somewhat of a spin-off of the one that I used to make for him all the time. And now he was the guy that brought me into Neft uh, 4 or 5 years ago now and and when we asked him to design the barrel, he said, I'd love to. I want to be a part of this, but under under one condition. And he wasn't very serious about it, but he was serious, where he said, y you have to sell it all the time. And our, our majority owner, without even hesitation, said, sure, you got it, but I'm just curious why. And he goes, because I'm not just gay in June. Mm -hmm. And it really hit deep with us, because I thought the representation is not a 30-day representation mm -hmm. for, for most people. It, it's 365. So... We very proudly are, are, are supporters of the community as, as, as friends of the family, as I like to say, but uh, the barrel is sold 365 because we think it should be all yes. the time. Yeah, and we love that from the allies. And there's a QR code. Does that mean I get something sort of discounted if I This is fun. It? You can scan it. I'm going to tell you yes, just because I think that's a fun Carl's story. Carl's like one of the most successful like, <laughs> journalists in the nation. He's asking for a discount. No, I'm not. I'm asking what the QR code is. I'm going to do it now. While we're you can scan it. It takes you to our website. It takes you to e-commerce. It will take you to a place where you can find cocktail videos that I make so you can kind of follow along at home. Take you and, to a place. Uh, it, takes you, it takes you to places. Am I over 21? <laughs> do you really want me to answer that? 1921. <laughs> Ouch. That's why I'm in my cabana wear. 
crafted. Oh, it's crafted in Austria. It's all. It's all my in Austria. My father's Austrian. Oh, wow. So this is my this is people's vodka. It's a good. There's a whole like list of why it's so good, but with the rise and all of this stuff that goes over my head. But I'm telling you, it, it's so smooth, and this is no joke. Having a hangover is is a career killer for me, especially yes. how often. You drink and all that. Yeah, it's part of the job. It yeah. is. But it if is. you have a hangover in the morning and you have to call out or you can't function, forget it. Uh, yes. Not with this. Um, your YouTube videos are so fun, but you also host a show for Neft. You have your own kind of we filmed do. podcast. It's Neft After Dark. Yes. Um, yeah. Tell us some of the people that you've chatted with. Oh, my goodness. Who have we had on the show? Uh, we A lot of them are, are up-and-coming musical artists. We really yes. want to shine light on I, – I don't want to say uh, – people that may not get this, but there's a lot of really talented people out there that can't just get in the spotlight. They can't even get on stage. Right. Yep. So a lot of that, we have a guy, our, our producer and showrunner, is a very talented man uh, named Neeson Williams. We're very lucky to borrow him because he actually does his own show. And of course, everyone's connected and everything, except for me, I'm like a one trick pony here. Um, but he uh, has brought all these artists in to be on our show as well as famous musicians. We've had actors, we've had entertainers. If we had, had a had everybody. Tony winner yeah. on our show. Yeah, um, and, and I, I'm just very honored and proud these people will come and sit down and talk to me and they, and they really open up. Mainly because it's like this, we have a cocktail, we don't have a coffee mug of water, we have a real drink, we get yeah. a little loose, we have food before and we have a little party after, which I think makes for a very enjoyable experience. But you're such a good host because you set the tone, it's relaxed, you feel like you're at a happy hour and you never know what you're gonna talk about, you just know that you're gonna unwind Probably spill some more tea than than you had intended to, but you're gonna walk away being God. That was that was a good time. It depends on how much naft I have. It gets real yeah. loose real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and you but guys, no hangover. No hangover. No That's hangover. always the best part. Wow. Um, but you guys film at your tasting room, uh, which is gorgeous, by the way. Um, yeah, so what, our, where our, is the our where is the HQ? Room? Yeah, so we have we have an HQ. We have a, a studio there. We have an edit bay. Um, and pretty much what it was, we moved into a location, and as other people moved out of the building, we just blew the wall out and took over their rent. So it worked out well. We're just expanding over in this one building. So we really do have a uh, kind of a headquarters down not too far off from, from LAX and El Segundo. So I think we local. should do like a mashup, like a pride mashup with influencers. Let's and do we it. Have like a little, like a little drinkathon. Uh, I'll commit That's for my whole entire our company. Our set right of now. our yes. drinkathon, isn't raising that, money isn't for that every sexy weekend? penguins. Yeah. I don't know. Sexy penguins. Penguins are sexy and they're very homosexual. That we've learned. That they mate for life, right? Did I make that up? Yeah, and they stole like they somebody do. else's baby or something, an egg. <laughs> I listen to the news with like one eye closed because uh, the news. Anyway, but I have a question for you. I was raised uh -huh. on old school Hollywood, like the movies, because my grandma was very involved in, in Hollywood. Um, and so very old fashioned. And I was like, you know, she was like my Auntie Mame. So certain drinks that I knew about, like vodka stingers, uh, gimlets, old fashions, they, unless you go to a special mixologist like yourself, it seems like that part of Hollywood, that part of old fashioned style, is it's like out the window. Nobody knows these drinks. It, it, it's a great question, and, and I'm, I'm not going to talk on this too much because the show isn't long enough. But the best way to describe this is, for a long time, there were there were really good bartenders and craft bartenders. That's what we had back in the '40s and the '50s. We had really good bartenders. Now, when we talk about mixology, this is a whole new thing. We're more like mad scientists to some degree with a larger understanding of multiple products and eccentric ingredients that we can combine to make a balanced cocktail. Mm -hmm. And most of those that we do, I'm going to sell out all the mixologists out there. I'm sorry, but also, you know, this is true. Um, they're kind of already based on cocktails that exist. We're not really creating new cocktails. We're creating new mixers. We're creating new reductions. We're creating new shrubs, uh, like the lavender syrup we're going to have in our cocktail tonight. That is what is the really making the botanical the stuff, difference. right? Well, botanical, but also a margarita used to be a margarita because you use lime juice. Now we'll not use something like a black lime cordial or a lime sweet, right? Which is a completely different deconstructed version that's no longer sweet and sour or just lime juice. Mm. So we're expanding on the way we used to do it. But can I just to your point for a second? Yeah, you talk because I old fashions have kind of become back in vogue. I know plenty of people who drink them. <laughs> I struggle to find someone who can just make a decent vodka martini. 100%. That, that I just went through this. You know how we travel I, a lot. I'm such a snob when it comes to the martini. Mm -hmm. I apologize to the I'm not even a snob, but make it the way that it should be well, and make it a quality drink. Well, I apologize ahead of time and I say, look, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm a real snob when it comes to a martini. Yeah. And so you got to make it right. Otherwise, I may ask for it to go back. Yes. And there's probably two bartenders that I trust in Los Angeles, which is the only bars you'll find me sitting at. But interestingly, um, shout out to a little, what's that? Uh, the I'm not going to shout out because I forgot the name. But there's a bar on Sunset. And, and I asked the girl, could you make me a vodka martini? I said, I'm really fussy. It's going to be really cold. She made it. And it was stunning. And I said, and it was on the happy hour menu. And I said, did you make that with well vodka? And she said, yeah. 
And I said, that's insane because normally it'd be a Grey Goose, but it was made with not that and it was perfect. So it's all in the execution, right? Easy answer is no. Um, really? I mean, you can tell when it's a well. That's when you get the hangover, and then that's if something's grainy. That's, it just it just doesn't feel right. Or it has a bitter taste. Now, if you shake a martini hard enough, yeah. I, I could make you think that tequila was vodka. Correct. You know what I mean? So, so really, when you shake a martini, you're diluting and you're watering it you're, down, which is not not necessarily incorrect. What you want to do is use a big block of ice mm -hmm. and shake it so that it's cold enough that you will not kill aromatics or therefore flavor profile, um, but also is chilled enough where it's kind of like. Uh, it's a nice experience on, it on the never, mouthfeel. It's like, you should never go when no. you've taken a sip. You shouldn't do that to anything. I don't That's think. very <laughs> true, actually. I learned well, that the hard way. Depends if you bought dinner. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think just like DJs, you know, when somebody was a DJ, they would have to really know the beats. They'd have to bring out mm -hmm. all their CDs or records or whatever, and they would literally have to craft it. Now we get a DJ that uses their playlist and uses an app, and yeah. they're a DJ. I feel the same thing is happening with the term mixologist. You yeah. can't just follow a recipe that you found on Google and be like that or add something that's so woke, like this is a lavender bush eaten by a llama in India. Mm -hmm. And so it's like... Just make me a good drink. That's what I really care Ian about. Just, Ian just but looked like he's embarrassed because maybe he's done that. <laughs> I haven't wait had a lavender bush like a lavender bush in a drink that was. I don't know. I, I don't know when the last time you had a lavender bush. I, 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 like some of these ingredients have gotten so ridiculous. I'm only yes. laughing because I tend to actually do exactly that with recipes, like with cooking. I think people think I'm like this chef extraordinaire. You're all, a big foodie. Foodie. I am a big foodie, yeah. but I'm all I'm doing is copying what someone wrote or someone did. Usually watching it first. I'm a big visual learner. Um. <laughs> But all I'm doing is literally just making something that either Martha made, Giada made, or is on all recipes. You know what I mean? But you're also not selling like Master Chef. Yeah, no, you're not no, calling no, 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 yourself no. Master Mixologist. Yeah. No, exactly. And I'm sure along the way you're kind of adding elements that are important to you that you play around with. For sure. But I'm talking about like some of like these ridiculous Lavender bartenders, syrup. like you know, they want to be the next you know undiscovered actor, and they think in the meantime they're a bartender. It's like no, it takes skill, it takes craft. Mm -hmm. To your point. Yes. When these old Hollywood stars would go to their bartender, it was like going to the doctor. They had to have the skill and sure, it's medicine. Well, in, in the old For movies, many days, yeah, it's a lot of medicine. medicine. <laughs> the guy walks up to the bar in the old movies and and doesn't yes. say a word, and the bartender just hands Slides him it across yeah. the bar. Yeah. And, and realistically, that's Paul Robinson and I. When you know your clientele enough, and, and it doesn't happen quickly, you have to. It takes time and experience, right? You have to build that rapport. When you know your clientele enough, and we were talking about the whole definition of mixology, the end of that long, weird version of a whole bunch of words is balance. Yeah. This is what you're talking about. Right. You, even if there's two ingredients. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty Martin martini. But you can mess that like, up. Yes, you can. It's like can. truffle oil. Like You can't overuse it, and, and you have to make it balance. I think that's the biggest thing when we talk about the really good mixologists of today can use eccentric ingredients and create balance. Alex, I feel, uh, Alexander, I feel that your bartender just knows what your drink is when you walk and in the bar. And it doesn't matter. I can go in a hole, like a hole in the wall where they serve like plastic cups. I like that. Like the, I'm so sad the Gold Coast is not in oh Los Angeles anymore. 10 a.m. If you needed to drink at 10 a.m., you go there. But people <laughs> knew you and they knew your drink. Do you know, and I was so known I'm, as the beauty of the bar there. Smokey, who was the... Until I walked in. Oh, that's so true. Do you know oh, Smokey? Of course I, I, know I would Smokey. walk in and he'd be like, hey, there, hair. there he yeah. is. It's yep. the beauty of the bar. And they used to make, that sounded just like him. That's right. That, that was eerie. But they would make a Bloody Mary and they would stack oh, yes. the he, that was his. shrimps. And like, it was famous. The but Sunday it was more about the environment. But it was still a quality drink, no matter if it was in a plastic cup or whatnot. But I also feel that we have a responsibility as bar goers. We've gotten so rude with the way that more. we order, the way that we're on our phone, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. What's good here? No, bitch. Like, you do some work. Treat no, your you bartender booze. with uh, respect. And, you know, so it's partly uh, our fault, too. I love that. We had a cocktail called The Good Here, which was $28, and it was a Pabst Blue Ribbon and a shot of Jameson. There so it is. So if someone ordered that, we just turned around and got it, and they got the, the lesson real quick. <laughs> know, know what you want to order. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so what are you making for us mm. today? So this is called The This Kenzie. is our official pride yep. cocktail. This is our cocktail for today. This one uh, I've called the Kinsey. We talked about this based on the Kinsey scale. Anybody can drink it because everybody's a little. That's it. It's made for everybody, stubborn. you guys, and everyone everyone likes a little cocktail, right? So uh, it's got fresh lime juice, and I'm just gonna pour this in here in in no awkward way. I think I'm gonna eyeball it. And I'm uh, everyone should be really uh, impressed by me. I'm doing this sitting down, which is never a thing. <laughs> I, I, I do more I said and that more this sitting week. down. Yeah. I said this this do week, you? but it was I, not. I find myself sitting more often than not. Yeah. So fresh lime, uh, lavender reduction. So French recipe, lavender reduction, orange yeah. flower water, 
And orange this, flower this water. orange flower Where do you water. get that? I was just now, ask can, that. That's Amazon, thing. you guys. No, like, but, there's no secrets no, to No, I know, this. but there, there's, uh, this is the other thing. If I can jump in. As someone who wants to do these things, sometimes I get a bit intimidated when I look at the list and I go, oh, it's a smoky 30-day-old bitters and it's a this and it's that. I'm like, oh, gosh. See, that gets a little ridiculous. So it, it does, but that's also like, that's when mixologists start showing off. And I'll, I'll be honest, I do it too. Well, why but, not? Well, that we've, we've, we've learned this stuff. We want to show it off and... and Really what it is is we're showing off to other mixologists to some degree. But this is a cocktail anyone can make at home if okay. you just follow yeah. the steps. And, all and the we can get on that on Amazon. You can get or everything Fevmo here on anything. Amazon except for the Neft. You can go somewhere okay. else and get that. Uh, this is called Blue Matcha, also known as Blue Butterfly Pea Powder. Um, and it's just kind of fancy. I've fun. Never, I know. And the, what really is what it does, I just had deja vu it adds at color. Me. It doesn't add any texture, any Pea flavor. Pea often does. Just adds <laughs> color. <laughs> just uh, look at my carpet from my dog. We're going to add a, I thought some that was going neft, in a whole of different course. Direction. No, I wouldn't. Folsom. Please. And this one's for me, so I can just do as much as I Isn't want. It's the Eat a Garden Pour. That's what I love. <laughs> if you can't raise it yourself, you can buy it. It's fine. And then fresh cucumber, because this is going to be our, our earthiness. Like we talked about uh, neft you being a You squeeze the vodka. cucumber? Wow. I just break it in there, because some people muddle it, and I think yeah. that Don't you it doesn't always do a lot of good for it unless <laughs> unless you've uh, peeled the cucumbers, because they can get a little bitter. The texture and, and of that, too. I, I take I'm gonna, you know what? I'm just going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, and I like to use uh, English cucumbers because they're mainly seedless and they, and they don't have a whole bitter. Again, uh, I'm English, taking my English mouth shut. cucumbers are very bitter, by the way. I don't know. personal How's experience. Your, <laughs> you're English. I am, I am, yes. Born there, but technically American. Yeah, because he came to Miami. We're going to get into Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, look okay. at the, I know the color. Went look at the I pulled your report card. Excessive talking during and class. Usually we wow. would double strain this, but, you know, just for the sake of time yeah. and television, I, I we're going to jump ahead. This is all just so wrong on the price this is a, a dehydrated lime, and then of course we got to put we got to fancy this up, right? Uh -huh. Can you this dehydrate limes by yourself at home? Yes, if you have an air fryer, you can do it. Uh, <laughs> just have it like, live with Carl for a week. <laughs> don't yeah, don't just try to leave them outside; it doesn't work. But yeah, I there's tried de that. food dehydrators that, of course, this won't come off. Yeah, uh, and then no a little comment. gold slice on top. You no, that's, that's real gold. Like the Kinsey. That's, that's just real a gold. It's real edible gold. Yes, it is. Edible so, gold. Yeah, yeah, they use this on cakes and stuff like that. So Tony, can is, wow. is there any way to? Do this because I, I, I want to tip. You want the three shots. Here's what we're gonna do on on our social media. We're gonna put the recipe and we're gonna put really good pictures. So you can see it's it's gorgeous. It is. Gorgeous. You serve this at any cocktail party or even on a date. This is pretty in, in, impressive. Or even for breakfast. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Pride. Ian, would you give us a, oh, a, yeah. a Pride toast? A Pride toast? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be here with all of you crazy people right now, enjoying your drink and. Um, I really hope the gold leaf is something I'm gonna like. I'm excited. I'm. No. We're gonna are look you, like are you, '90s rappers. Are after you excited this. for the the squeezed I'm cucumber excited, juice? Yeah, I'm excited to just taste it. I'm always excited for the squeezed cucumber juice. Okay. Well, Cheers, I, everybody. I, I want to add, you guys. Kinsey had it right. Kinsey had it right. Ooh, wow. Mm. Ooh, that's really good. Oh my god, mm. that's really good. So I have to say, your lip first mm. hits that dehydrated lime because it it comes up to the lip. Oh, and wow. so you feel that taste going in, and then you get That's that frothiness. It's that soft where it kind of settles down, mm -hmm. that acidity, and then you get the sweet nectar. That's a great description. Did you what? rehearse Are we on this Food earlier? Network? You've done this right now. I watch it never all the time. It is really good. It's for, first time, right, Alex? It's great. All I know how to say is <laughs> no, that. Look at that. Oz. That's all I can give can you. Can I have another, Alex? Yes. Oh, yes. oh, wow. This is really, really good. It's really good. And the gold leaf. Thank you, guys. Drink your juice, Shelby. Juice this is, is better. Yeah, this could be your steel magnolia drink too, if you're Absolutely. having to be with You could call it a steel magnolia, if you wanted. Or I'm I'm open to name changes. But I love that this is very universal. I think mm -hmm. you could have this at a brunch. It's verse. Oh yeah. Yeah, you could have that even as a dessert cocktail mm -hmm. or a pre-dinner cocktail. It's, yeah, it's clean and fresh. Yeah, very clean. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Real fresh ingredients. Real fresh cucumber. Lavender reduction. And we're not using things like instead of. A triple really sack, which yeah, the, is just we're using can I have a orange flower. Yeah, of it's course, because it's not heavy. Like when you use those kind of, it, it's very light. Very it's light. It, there's no bitterness to it, and it actually helps create the froth on top. So when you smell it, it gives you this sweet punch that kind of paints a picture for your taste buds. And even like after dinner, if you have like a heavy meal, I think this would lighten everything up. Mm -hmm. And this has zero <laughs> calories in it, by the way. Oh, I'm very concerned with that. Well, don't <laughs> squeeze. Use fees. <laughs> That's what it says. Okay. Wow, it does good. though. It's the best it's part. No, that's really good. That's their, their slogan. It's great. That was the Australian in me, just, just showing the one, my just the one Australian in you. <laughs> 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 All right, Luke. Who's better drinkers? Like, who can hold their liquor better? The gays or the straights? The gays, hundred percent. Absolutely. Who tips better? The gays or the straights? The gays. Who tips wow. better? The gays or the lesbians? Mm. 
No comment. Don't isolate yourself from. <laughs> oh yeah, I, please. They're all watching. Ellen's across the way. Oh, she's not there anymore. Never no. mind. She's at home with Portia. Like, I ought to. Uh, Luke, it. what what an absolute mm, pleasure! Well, thank thank you. you, Luke. And I think like you've also proven that you can start adding little elements to your home bar without going crazy, without like yeah. breaking the bank. Like try this one ingredient, mm-hmm. and then you build your library up. And it's fun to try new vodkas too, like because I yeah, feel really like is. so many people have the stock standard what you kind yes. of expect, but something like this that is um, very supportive of Pride too. Neft vodka. It's it's fun. That looks good on your bar cart, and it tastes really good. And I recommend everyone, you guys, don't just take anyone's word for it. Try it for yourself. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Do side by side taste by test. I welcome it. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you you can go buy your own barrel of Neft at any of the liquor stores, but also uh, they're in a bunch of our uh, community bars as well. And if you That's go right. to Strut in OC, by the way, you guys sponsor the photo booth, which is so fun. <laughs> I love yeah. that bar. Luke has done such oh, a good job. Very good job. I was just there last week. Of course you were. Uh, Luke, where can people find and follow you? Uh, at Neft Bar, two R's on, on Instagram is the easiest way to find me. And, of course, Neft Vodka US yes. on there. And, then, and if you want, of course, uh, Neft After Dark, either .com or at Neft After Dark. Uh, on Thursdays, yes. And I, yes. And I want to have you on the show so oh, yes. badly. I, I think there we should is, do yeah. we should You should do wear like the Star mashup. Trek clothes. Wear the Star Trek clothes. I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah. We'd have to make it like Romeo Linnell or something. Joke over the head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much. We are so happy that we have Neft here every week. Um, our guests love it, and I love our guests loving it. Thank you so much. Then we find out all the tea. When we come back, we are talking to Ian Pageant, and we are getting to the nitty gritty. We're going to talk hot topics now that we're a little liquored up. Uh, we're going to talk about fun stuff, too. Uh, we're going to talk about your career, by the way. We're going to oh, talk wow. a little bit about behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a word from our sponsors. When we come back, it's all chat. Pour yourself another. We'll see you soon. Alexander from On The Rocks, where celebrities and cocktails mix. Here to chat about Fandaddies.com. High Fives and Good Vibes is your go-to site to get the hottest accessory for 2021. Yes, the fabulous clacking fan with designs that are totally fetch. And you may think that fetch can't happen, but it totally can. They call me Fetch Betch. Now here are the top uses for your Fandaddies fan. To look fabulous. You can spill the tea and tell secrets, but fancy-like. It is also the perfect punctuation for reclaiming your time. I'm speaking. I'm speaking. But I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. Up. And it can also cover that vodka breath. Oh, it's mouthwash, I swear. And last but not least, it makes you look fabulous. So fabulous, you have to say it twice. So go to fandaddies.com and get the fan for the best suits your image. Until we can clack our way through festival prides and events, it's a perfect accessory to spruce up your Instagram selfies or send as a gift. So extra. Support small businesses at fandaddies.com. And we are back. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. Right? Yes. Are you a little lit? I'm actually not because it's so light. And since I've been having to do most of the talking. <laughs> You're burning calories at a <laughs> Oh, yes. This is my cardio. Rapid speed. This is my usual Can cardio, Can I just tell you, way. actually, I've just hired a new trainer who told me about the amount of calories like you burn doing cardio is not a hell of a lot more than you burn doing your office day job. Huh. Mm. Uh, also laughing also burns a lot of ca- oh, oh Carl oh god <laughs> Carl that's embarrassing you're lit <laughs> it is I am Tony can we have some help over here oh I've just got to tighten my knob or something <laughs> oh my god no but <laughs> it's there Tony yeah. uh, but laughing also burns a lot of calories it does yeah that's why I'm a comedian <laughs> oh I see I don't know so ignore me for a minute <laughs> wow wow bitch on that note, let's formally introduce our guest, my co-pilot today, having issues uh, staying 
stiff, is uh, Carl Schmidt. <laughs> now he's double fisting. Australian born. He has been busy <laughs> on American, Canadian, British, and Australian televisions for the last oh, 13 there I years. Am. Look. Yes, there you are being serious there. See how serious we are? Uh, I even dressed nicely that time. Well, at ABC TV in LA, he's been a regular contributor since oh, 2013. The picture. He's a passionate activist in the fight against HIV stigma. He launched Plus Life in 2019 um, to help foster a new conversation about what it means for people living with HIV to tackle the stigma still associated with the virus. Uh, Plus Life can be found online at Plus Life Media. Uh, it's also a half hour television show in its second season on the newly launched ABC Digital Localish TV mm. network, which is so exciting. Talk about bringing our stories mainstream. It was this cold. In the studio that time. <laughs> Go back to that picture for a second. So can you look? I see a little oh. pokey nipple. Oh, oh I anyway. was I was I was looking somewhere else. I'm like, you're right. It must have been cold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wind Beneath My Wings. It must have been cold in, there in my shadow. Uh -huh. uh, you've seen him on the red carpet at every Hollywood award Ooh. show. Uh, he's interviewed all of the A-listers, and he slid into some of their DMs. Please welcome Carl Schmidt. <laughs> also joining us. I love us. that we've got a studio audience who hasn't clapped, but we've got that in They don't room. know what's going oh, on. They're okay, like, what fine, the fine, hell? Hello. Also joining us, Ian Padgett, uh, coined 2020's Sexiest Guy on TikTok by People Magazine with uh, over 2.5 oh million TikTok followers. is widely known for his social media challenges and quirky dance videos. Um, started a new chapter in his life and has been opening up about the mental health struggles <laughs> social media personalities face as they are constantly uh, in the public eye. Wow. Uh, his very public breakup brought a lot of attention and comments to his personal life and he's ready to talk about it oh. um, and how wow. we as a society can be better and help those going through strife without overstepping our boundaries. <laughs> which we can all learn. Uh, he loves music and never stops singing. Uh, he's a Broadway actor, by the way. Uh, but above all, acting is his passion. He is classically trained actor, singer, dancer. Uh, three Broadway shows, can film I, and television. Can we add West End as well? West End? Yeah. Oh, wow, you remember that. Of course I do. Yes, yes. you could actually, yes. Yes, And the West End. End. I was just getting to that, Carl. Sorry. Well, you, you told me to not. talk more. I, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, also, uh, he has been on Saturday Night Live. Uh, please formally welcome Ian Paget. Thank you. Hello. Who is that girl at that picture? I don't know that girl He's pointing at both of us right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's that girl? Um, I want to get into your background and past because it's... You know, people talk about Dark. your your present. <laughs> no, but people talk about your present success, and you know, I've seen the interviews. I've, I've done the research, and it's like, well, I want to know what makes you today. Like, where did it all begin? Um, but I want to know first, just off the bat, why do influencers, as a stereotype on the surface, get such a bad rap? You know, we use influencer now, and most of us like roll our eyes. The new character in Queer as Folk is an actual influencer comedian who got the part, who plays an influencer, who gets canceled. But we have this love-hate, like with the Kardashians. Um, but still, influencers are getting millions of views on their dances, their, you know, eating food on camera. They're doing the damn thing. So why is there this weird kind of stigma? like, oh, influencer. I think, I think because... Into the mic, sweetie. Into the <laughs> mic. Um, I think because we just maybe didn't grow up with it in that same way, so it's still in its, like, newness, even though I think right now it's, it's a lot more... It's it's not so um, looked down upon, and now we have it's a new title called content creator, yeah. right? Which is less. It's, that's a hot topic. It's okay. Like, it's like OnlyFans. You know, it's like we roll our eyes at OnlyFans, but everybody is subscribed to people on OnlyFans. Uh huh. Or it's porn actors saying that OnlyFans uh, content creators I, are not. I think are that, not I, I think I think, right. you I think you make the point there though, because you know, for people like me who are old. Um, I and thought you were going to no. say on OnlyFans. No, no. <laughs> I, I give my stuff away for free, apparently. Just look on Twitter. No. Um, you, and now you're on your phone because I know. No, I think it's because there's a lot of, as I said, older people like me who really worked their asses off at, to, and not mm. saying that not saying that you guys don't but yeah, yeah. but but you know I'm I'm 42 almost and I've been doing this <laughs> since I was 13 years old right and then along has come along the, the influences have come and it seemingly seemingly overnight because you might have a certain physique or look a certain way you're suddenly a superstar with 2.5 million followers so to, I'm answering the point of why do we roll our eyes because we go shit I've worked not allowed to say that. No, no, one hundred percent. And I, I totally hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm just. That's why I think there might be an eye roll. But, but the funny thing is that we're still engaging. We're still, we're with still these consuming. Otherwise, it. of course, they wouldn't be on a certain level. Of course, if they wouldn't have two point five million followers if those people weren't scrolling and actively in, involved. And mind you, there are people who have more than two point five million followers who are really doing 
their version of the damn thing. And being someone who grew up doing theater my entire life, I've you've worked, worked hard. I've worked hard my entire yes. life at something and had a uh, my own uh, adjustment to possibly changing my own viewpoint on the influencer world because when Insta first came out and then influencer word was being used yeah. there was a giant sort of eye roll and stigma around it because it was like they just get things for free whatever the list is but now ha having been thrust into influencer land not by choice but now i'm here and it's like you know we live in a multi-hyphenate world i actually have learned so much about how like at least the good ones who are creating um engaging content it's it is no joke it is a lot of work you don't have a vacation. Ever. Everyone on your team, uh, you know, just kind of, you're just always on call. It's always like, oh, well, you're doing this job. At least that's what it feels like to me. I feel like sometimes when I work with brands, they are the they are so fast to be like, I need that ASAP. But if I need that ASAP, it's like pulling teeth. But like because they paid? just assume <laughs> it's like you're on net your phone. Net 30, net 60, net 90. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Luckily, CAA is there to help for all of that. Yeah. But, but like... I think I'm in a place right now where I have a very, very different viewpoint and appreciation for content creators slash influencers. The ones who I at least like admire and who I think are doing the damn thing. One of them being my ex, who I think is just like fucking brilliant at the thing. What's your thing? I mean, I looked at your TikTok this afternoon and, and you know, obviously I've known you. Backstory. He and I have known each other for about 15 years now. Yeah. Like long, long how, time. How did you guys meet? Or Oh. Uh, my oh. friend, I did a sh I did Dream Dream Girls at Tuts Theater Under the Stars in Texas, and one of my so you, you played one of the leads because it's Texas and totally. it's Theater Under the Stars. Absolutely, yes. I was Effie. Um, <laughs> I actually believe it was that, a different it was a different time. It different was a time. different time, but very progressive, even for Texas. Yeah. Um, no, but I was doing Dream Girls at the time, and one of my dear friends that I became very close with in the cast, Randy, was close with uh, Carl, and we met through that. Yeah. And once you meet Carl, it's just like friends, ever. sweetheart. Yeah, well, and I'm also a sucker for an accent, so I was just like, oh, he's so and nice. And we met, we met in London, right? Because I was, st I was still living in London, and I think you came. You guys over just to say do... grinder. Let's cut no, the story no, no, short. No, no, like, no. You, what really you came over to do West Side Story, but I don't think we met then, didn't we? No, it was after that. Oh, he wait. probably was I at the show every night wait. with his ticket at the stage door. No, no. I, I mean, as much as I love a little bit, the, the West Side Story is not up there on my list. Sorry, bad guy. What do you mean up there on your list of what? I just it's too long and tedious. It's not a moment. show that you can see over and over again. I I I agree with that. Hmm. Thank you. Like you must have not had a good Anita. Sure. Great. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. But to, we to, are, we will to the point that <laughs> but but to say that you have been working. I mean, mm -hmm. that was like 15 years ago. Yeah. Long before I lived in Los Angeles. This is what I have to say about your type of content creator, somebody that has the background. We know the times will shift. It could be five years, it could be 10 years. You've constantly, and you as well with the different projects, have had to pivot, 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 reinvent yourself, learn a whole new skill set, dominate that skill set, mm -hmm. but then you have all of this that you can do. Go back to Broadway, sure. Be on but a that's TV what show, you, sure. But that's, I think that's what you have to do, right, Alexander. The new content creators that have, I think, become quick successes mm -hmm. that are doing their one thing and they're sticking to it, whether it's a shirtless selfie over and over again, that's not going to work Well, no, work what, happens, what happens when the man boob starts to settle in? Well, you start a podcast. Oh, oh you're, <laughs> I don't know. Rhetorical. Okay. You <laughs> don't know. Cause cause you I was haven't just like, the well, man I was going to come with a rebuttal, but I thought, let's just, we'll start off, like, nicer. <laughs> it's on the rocks. You don't have to, you yeah, don't have yeah, to do yeah. that. Okay. Um, so... But I'm saying that there is this double standard happening. There is. And to answer your question, I am actually in a bit of a self-discovery mode with my own content right now. So when you ask, like, what is my thing? I actually I, I have this thought a lot because since I broke since Chris and I broke up, see, you know, a lot of content isn't being like uh, produced the way it was when we were together. And so like we were just making so many videos all at the same time. And it was just like you, very obvious and clear what kind of content that was. Relatable, funny, pranks, whatever. That I took and like twisted and you know turned on their head. And now I'm in a place where I'm kind of like figuring out what it is, like what's my voice, just me by myself. And it does kind of include, sometimes it feels like because I'm not specific enough, I feel like I don't have a thing. But it's also just because I can do seven million things. Right. I can talk for an hour. I can dance for ten minutes. I can sing for three, 
and I can, you, you know what I mean? Like, no, I, can I, do the I totally thing. do because people say to me about Plus Life and stuff all the time. Yeah. They're like, well, what's your target? Who are you aimed at? And I said, everybody. And yeah. they're like, you can't do that. And I'm like, actually, yes, I can. Yeah. And I have to say, with your variety, somebody's going to click on one video where they wouldn't have clicked that's, on your other that's video. That's exactly and what so I was doing. Capture that whole market. Tony, can we take a can we take a peek at one of his dance oh, uh, yes. videos? This is th ah. this is one of your. This is one of your higher watch TikToks, and I just love it. Um, but to me, this is like the epitome. Of oh, I would, yes. So funny. I mean, so LA. This looks so like LA. it was on Beverly Hills. I have a somewhere. question about this because my ex boyfriend's a professional dancer. Uh huh. And he pulls those same faces with his mouth. Oh, What's yeah. What's that about? So, well, for this one, funny enough, like that's not one of my favorite dances we ever did because I we learned that so fast. We wanted time crunch because we could only... Yeah, you and me both. We'd be like, play, play it again. again. <laughs> yeah. No, because, uh, yeah, so talk us through it. Like, what the actual process... I want to know about the mouth so, thing, though. Okay, I, we'll get to mouth thing, but, like, what happens with Kelly, who I'm in love with and he's one of my favorite people to collaborate with, we just come together and she shows me videos that she's like, I think this would be fun to do with you. And then I say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the way we first started with creating was like I choreographed. I was like, oh, like, let's make up a dance. I have these ideas. But this one was, I forget, I think Nathan Ramsey's dance, which I love. And he's he's a, a UK dancer and like makes really, really great choreography. But she'll show me this. We'll take like 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to learn it. And then I mean, you just like bank it. There was your... like a two day yeah, rehearsal no, no. process. Exactly. Here on my like, <laughs> oh, no. at that dance yeah. studio. Which yeah. then goes into your map because I tend to, when I feel insecure about like, I don't feel like I have enough time with this, I'm going to pretend like I maybe know more than I do. So the faces are making up for possibly like, don't look at me maybe not knowing this dance. Oh my well. god, that that's you know what I mean. That was flawless, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and because people don't just watch it once and scroll through, they watch it again and again, and so they do notice face, they notice like the shoes, and they notice the environment. Like that mm -hmm. street was empty. Like you probably had to film that real fast before Every time cars there's a car. Coming. We have to stop yeah. and like we're, the shooting takes like at least I don't know twenty minutes because of the car situation or. Or there was just a lot of like, nope, mess up again. Mess like I do a lot of behind the scenes too. My favorite yes. thing to do is when we learn a dance, I just always put the camera up because I think the behind the scenes are really funny. The twerking, and oh my god, oh my I god. laugh so hard <laughs> because we look at, we see the final product usually in its perfection. Well, there was no final product there because I'm still. But learning it was how to so twerk. endearing to see, you know, Ian. We think, oh, you know, he he's got the it bash. all, whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Here's this here's this white boy twerking. He's like, am I twerking? I was like, no, honey, you're not. But it was so cute. And so when you did the twerking video, it was like, I got to be a part of that did you, leading did, up to did it. Did it inspire you to twerk? Honey, I twerk when I walk down the stairs. Like, it? it automatically happens. Can happened. you, like, can you blah, twerk blah, 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 for blah, blah, blah. us now? Absolutely not. Also, I just want to correct. I'm not a white boy. Okay. I'm like, I am, I'm white passing, but I'm what? Hispanic. Yeah, uh, Honduran. I, wow, yeah. See, well, no, I do a lot of research. I will tell you, he, this is, can I just pay you also, a call? You went offended. to French uh, grade school. I sure did. You speak three languages. I sure do. Mm -hmm. Wow. I pulled your report card. Wow, this is easier than any date I've ever been on. <laughs> A I lot have, of people say I that about Alexander. I know, it's like, yes. A lot of people. <laughs> Check, I, please. And he's had one and a half vodka drinks, so. The night wow. is young, my friend. Oh, don't we know But it. you've had this kind of multicultural, and yeah. that's also funny to just call you the white boy. I do it because it's, it's a cheap joke, but you do come with this cultural richness mm -hmm. as well, and I think we see all those different sides that you have had the education, you have been exposed to different cultures, and I think that all feeds in to what you present. It's not just... Some of our friends do one thing only, and that works for them for now, um, and they do it well. I'm not putting that down, but there's so many different layers and different energy that you bring. Thank yeah, you. and I th and I think when you I think when you sort of can find something that becomes a real passion within it, it takes on another level of itself. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I don't in any way consider myself an influencer or. A, or a I'm a but content you are creator. Carl. I know well, that no, you hate that. I do, but, but, it's but happened. But when you find something that suddenly clicks inside you and you just it's like a, a fire is lit. It takes whatever you're creating to the next level too and you love doing it. Like mm -hmm. you I mean, I can't begin to tell you the amount of times that I have to sit down to do a plus life interview and I've had a long day and I'm like, oh, "Who is this? I don't want to do it." And I'm in a bad mood. And the minute something the interview and Carl, the minute the interview, the minute the interview is finished, 
I'm in the best mood ever. And your heart mm-hmm. starts being like, yes. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Correct. And Carl, you are an influencer. When you came out on television as HIV positive, do you know what that did for so many people in your position that were hiding behind the stigma at the risk of your career? The fact that you have been part of the first televised prides ever, you are an influencer. And you're an activist now, whether you wanted to or not. You're a spokesperson, whether you wanted no, to I or not. No, I enjoy being an activist. The influencer thing makes me slightly uncomfortable. And maybe that's because, and to say this, the stigma, and I'm all about fighting stigma, right? Yeah, yeah. But maybe it's the stigma that comes with that word influencer that just makes me go, no, I don't want people to think I'm this overnight fame whore, yeah. which I'm not, that, that does not apply to you, but I'm just saying that's what I think a lot of people look at influences I mean, and even think that as gay men the stereotype used to be a will and grace the jack like sassy yes. one-liner snap 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 that was a stereotype of being gay and we know there was so many different shades of being gay just like there's so many different shades of being an influencer mm-hmm. to that point i want to play one of your other tiktoks um if we can do this this is you actually shared your coming out story for pride oh, oh i like this one yeah your it, pants it are good in this one i like those pants i'm thinking Thank i you. wanted to share my coming out story it's one of uh, the most beautiful memories i have with my dad And if this story can help with anyone who's having a hard time, if you feel scared to do so, um, listen to this story because I was pretty surprised at how it went down. I'm actually, I'm gonna get a little closer to you guys. I was a senior in high school, post prom night. My dad picked me up because I was in such a good mood and we were vibing, which wasn't always the case. I was like, dad, I have something I wanna tell you. Are you gonna tell me you like boys? Uh, yeah. Ian, I'm your father. I've, I've known since you were a toddler. What? Like, well, why didn't you tell me? His whole thing was like, just be safe. You're my son. I love you no matter what. Just, I, I, I don't think we should tell your mother. <laughs> okay. His thought process around things is, it's old school. My mom is Latina. Latina. And you know, this is her first gay son. She hasn't had any more after me, thank God. Because I need all the attention. I was like, okay, like why? He's like, yeah, you know, like what she won't know won't hurt her. Which I totally understand. In the moment, I think feeling so good about sharing it with someone in my family and, and such a vulnerable moment that I was like, okay, this is a baby step, cool. We'll, st- we'll, keep it at, we'll keep it at this. And it's one of the most surprising moments that I ever had with him because I just really didn't think that it was gonna go like that. And I was so, so, so scared to ever talk about it. So I just really wanna say that, Daddy, I love you so much. And I really, really love and cherish that moment that we had. And if you're someone who is figuring out how to share this with a family member, you know, biggest thing I say to people is like, if you think of the person as capable of receiving the information, they will. I was in a good place. I was in a good mood. We were vibing and I took that opportunity. I wasn't worried about my information being received by him. And so he wasn't either. If that's something that's on your mind and you do feel like there's trust, but you just have a little bit of fear, I would say everything you want is on the other side of that fear. If you leap, the net usually will appear. Love you. Happy pride. Oh, and if you want to know what my mom said, this is not six minutes long and we don't have time for that. (laughs) But do you wow. see that? That's like the opposite side of one of the dancing videos, but it's still that personality still has that energy. So to me, it's like, I, I wonder how many people were affected by that, by that one video who might be struggling with coming out, especially during COVID. So many of our uh, younger generation were forced back in the closet at, this, at, at, you know, uh, at the expense of losing Literally, their home. Literally, because they couldn't leave the house. That's the, well, that, or they'd be kicked out if they, if they did come no, out. I, yeah, I, but I know. you know, just speaking no, I, the, the, when, when you... I'm oh, a comedian too, can't you see? Yes. <laughs> when, you, when you own your truth, right, and when you're, when you're comfortable in your truth um, and you're sincere like that, that resonates. Like, you watch that, I want to watch more of you, whether it's dancing or mm-hmm. unpacking something or that. It, when you when you're when you're being one hundred percent authentically you, I've found in the hundred thousand years that I've been doing this job, that's when it resonates and you click with somebody at home. And even if it's just one person that you click with, that's the difference. Mm. Versus, I'm going to put on a show now, mm-hmm. and you're going to like it. Yeah. I I I don't want to talk about your breakup quite yet. I want to keep that towards the end of the show. But part oh, of that is when couples get on social media. Sometimes it makes my skin crawl. Skin crawl because it is not authentic. It's not the right chemistry. It's it's awkward. And it can be very destructive and too. That's what. So, but we'll, we'll keep that. But something in what you did during mental health awareness. And I have to tell you, I've been doing interviews for Pride year after year after year on the show, where we dedicate a whole month to. LGBTQ issues. Never, ever have we talked about mental health so much until this Pride that everybody is sharing their story. And it used to be something that you didn't, 
talk about or you were you know you just kept it to yourself which mm-hmm. is so destructive mm-hmm. um, and I know this uh, this past mental health awareness month you really shared a lot from your personal life and your struggles from mental health and it's 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 something that that plagues the industry and it's the mental health issues that happen with social media influence not just the industry though I mean especially the LBG L, our community hundred percent but what we don't understand from this influencer industry is that there's a whole other depression and mental health uh, uh, issues that, that are happening. Can you talk about this from your unique point of view, what exactly the pressures are and how you kind of deal with that? I mean, <clears throat> I guess it can piggyback on what Carl was just saying is that from that video, so authentic, so engaging, I would want to see more of that. If you're, you know, I'm a person who like, it was received super well. Andrew, who's sitting in the audience right now, was with me when I was like making it and editing because I was just like, what is the purpose of it? I'm always asking, like, why am I posting this thing? You know what I mean? And it was received so well. And I had a moment of like, OK, so then the next one should be just as authentic. It like it, it, it can become its own. Um, oh God, it can be your Achilles heel in a way. And so this thing that you find to be very rewarding can also be a thing that can like. take an amount of energy out of you that actually takes away from the authenticity because now you're trying to just recreate a One moment. Right. You know, exactly. And so with me, I have had a, a, quite a struggle with finding like what my voice is that still feels organic, but still feels engaging and, and something that's like worth putting out. And so sometimes I don't do that. And then sometimes I find that my mood had been, had been dependent on like uh, just videos in general. So like when I was with Chris, we put out so much content and I felt very seen and I felt like almost uncomfortable by how much people thought they knew me. And now on the other side of that, you know, it's like it just it, it ebbs and flows. And so I've had to kind of just be my own self-regulator when it comes to am I putting something out because I need a mood boost and I need validation from the world or am uh. I putting something out because I want to share something right. that naturally already make lights me up, makes me feel good, or I think would just be helpful for someone to hear. And those are, those are, those are just like things you're, you're you have to think about as how, your own producer and your writer and your, you know, how much pressure do you feel to produce this content? Like uh-huh. now that now that it's become this thing, yeah. well, and also like, a job too. Like, no, that's what I mean. It's, like, it's your but job. but and to your point just now of saying like, you know, I was so vulnerable and honest and open in that one, and it felt really good, and the reaction was good. Shit, how am I gonna one up that now and keep it? Like, I can't air all my personal stuff out there because mm-hmm. there's stuff you you have to keep personal because that's important that you to keep your identity. So, how much pressure do you feel on a daily basis to come up with something? And then also the second part of that is. If it doesn't get the numbers that your previous video does, how does that affect your mental health? Do you feel suddenly like a crashing failure? Because I know for myself, if I put something out that hasn't done as well, whether it's just an Instagram picture or it's something for Plus Life, and it doesn't do as well, I'm like, I failed. This is good. Nobody likes this. That, Nobody wants so to see it. That's so awful. In- Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really awful, and you can't judge. It could be the time of day. It could sure. be whatnot. Or you could really effectively reach 100 people, but you only got this many likes. Or you reached, you got 2,000 likes, and nobody really paid attention. They, they were just, just scrolling and, and yeah. through. And plus, there's also, I've heard from influencers, there's this euphoria, just like I feel well, when I it, buy new shoes that. or I'm online yes. shopping. And when you the endorphin release. There's this euphoria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would agree with that for sure. There's something nice about feeling like you're contributing and like joining in on the fun or being liked. Exactly. But even just 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 deciding that you're going to make something and you think you've got a great idea or that this moment feels like, "Oh, I I want to jump on the train. Everyone seems like they're having fun on the for you page." You know, that kind of thing. Um and so when you do decide to post, like they're saying, like there is something nice about that. It's super exciting. It feels very uh what's the word not mysterious but you uh, uh, unpredictable because right. you just don't know where it's going to go but i will have to say i weirdly am i i am okay with where numbers do or don't fall like obviously 
anyone would want gigantic numbers. Well, it's your business, though. I it's mean, the exactly. bigger the numbers, the bigger the paycheck of potential sponsors. Sure, but you know what's interesting is I have actually felt, felt, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm not looking at analytics. I'm so not that person. I would hire someone to do that for me. <laughs> but, like, I, I feel like I, because I had a deep, deep fear that after the breakup, no one was going to want to do anything with me. I, a lot of what was being... <coughs> handled was Chris. He was really good about like, let's make this. He just is idea, idea, idea. He's and got a lot a lo of couples, there's somebody that handles the business yeah. part. There's somebody that is the con And it's, it's one of the best yeah. things about him, you know? But can I, can I, yeah. I know you wanted to wait, but can I, I can't help myself. How much of your success do you think, and the success of the two of you, maybe was, you know, keeping that relationship together? And what was that breaking point? I'm sorry to go into it so soon. Jesus Christ. No, but come on. Like you're saying, like you were creating so much content, right? Yeah. You were getting all the likes. I mean, the endorphin release on that. I mean, that you gained notoriety mm -hmm. by being a couple. So how hard was it to make that decision to go, this is not, as a couple, this isn't working. We're going to be friends. But as boyfriends, um, you know, we should maybe let that chapter lie and start the next one. How much did you maybe hesitate or how much did the contributing factor of the brand being a couple play into any of that? I mean, it played a, a, a giant like role in the pressure cooker that was that year and a half and two years. And it, I, I, it wasn't by choice. Like I didn't, I didn't ask to all of a sudden have that be my right. work and job. And so a lot of it was super fun and then all of a sudden it became work. And like anything, everyone hates their job. No one, no one who goes to work for anything they do loves their job. There's a moment in time where you're just like, oh, I got to go to work. You know, it's just yes. like, it's just a part of the thing. And that's just what happens. And that kind of happened with us. And our job and work was so wrapped around being in a couple that like, I actually felt like I had a pretty good head on my shoulders around, around trying to keep it sustainable. That was my biggest right. thing. And I, I really like honestly didn't have the language around how to communicate that. And I actually feel like if I could go back now knowing what I know or feeling that like, it's not the end of the world. It isn't, it doesn't just make me this one thing. I, we, I would have probably handled it a little bit better. I right. would have had more of an arsenal of, of support, just whatever language wise or, or, or just, I just wasn't equipped for it. Yeah. But these are life lessons, Ian. So, exactly. so I mean, you know, and the good thing is, you know, it, 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 certainly when I look at your social pages, anyway, you guys still have a solid relationship. You're just not oh, boyfriends. Yeah. So Correct. exactly. Like, yeah. It's, 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 it was, you know, breakups. I can relate to that. Yeah. They're, they're exact. Go. It, it, it always makes me very <laughs> nervous. Shut, shut up, Carl. Let me out of this. No, I, no, 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 It always makes me very nervous when I have people on the show as a couple or when somebody starts dating somebody else and they start making videos together. It makes me super nervous because, because of what I've seen. I'm like, that's the end of that relationship right there because your time together is less special, like you said. And then everything becomes a stageable moment is what I've right. heard from it's many for of every, It's for everyone, and not so it's just like, us. Do you have a real relationship or it's just the relationship Correct. that your audience sees? And I've heard this also from porn couples that start an OnlyFans together. It's like, well, they forgot how to be intimate with just each other without the camera angles or without feeling that there's another presence or that there's somebody else in the bedroom. So are you growing as a couple organically or are you growing as social media stars? As a business. And some couples stay together and that's all they have. It's this false, weird... And then and then you put the gay creepy. thing on top of it, which we already, as gay men, there's, you know, well, and read the COVID, books. You know, it's like yeah. we yeah. were all hungry for Well, that's companionship. how I met my ex-boyfriend. It was covid Oh, he's speechless. Wow. Well, no, I mean, I, I don't want to get he into does, it. He does, he does, but he doesn't. It's it's also a telltale sign, and I don't know how you feel about this, and we talked about it when you were on last. Uh, is it a red flag if your significant other doesn't put you on their grid or tag you in a lot of stuff, or there's one person posting about the other? Or they don't or like or comment. <laughs> this is one of the things I, like, hate about social media yeah. is that it's it becomes this chasm of comparison and this Ooh, whole... The chasm of comparison. Yes. Note that yeah. down, will you? It's like a relationship algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And But but it's it's so... Not even so, uh, subconscious, but it's there's a sort of non... You're just not being so deliberate about it, right? Because it's not in a book yet. N we're not writing a bunch of... There's not so much information and data around it because we're, we're still living in it yet. In maybe 200 years, people were like, the time of influence and social Ooh. media yeah. had a – we will That's see the effect on, like, brain and blah, 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 right. whatever. Um, 
and that that is one of the things that like while it has brought me a lot of um, joy and I've connected with a lot of people and when I walk around and people come and feel feel compelled to come and tell me I just have to say like I love your content I love you like that is very very sweet that I would never 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 give that up or change that there's just like who wouldn't want someone to come tell you that and it happened by accident which makes it even more beautiful because it was like wow I really wasn't even trying it it just so happened that like a perfect storm of things came to be and there's also the other side of it, which is like now who because who we are on social media isn't is literally just a, a version of you. It's a, it's one yeah, little yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Our bad days. We never put our shitty. I look like shit. Maybe days, maybe or, we should start an Instagram page where we just put our bad and shitty. Oh, yeah, that's but real, people do that. This hot. is what I mean. Is there there now is, that's their brand. There is a canon of work done by version of it. It's still manufactured that. though. Yes. They're not just taking a selfie and posting it. It's still manufactured, even if they're showing their depressive side. And to your point of somebody that's oversharing and very emotional and it's sincere the first couple of times. There are influencers out there that every video they put is so depressing and it's become this act um, that it's so unbelievable and it it takes away from other people that are sharing their truth. That you know, well, it also takes away from your relationship with the other person where you go, N now this feels like a, a job. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a really wild, It's it is the new wild, wild west. It really is like, but I also have such an appreciation for people who are doing it, who are so like they they have a schedule. They're like, this is the video I'm taping today, and I'm gonna edit it for tomorrow. And blah, blah, blah. and I there's something about that that I envy because I don't. I'm not the most organized person. I'm the king of efficiency and calling it out in every other person, <laughs> every driver in LA, every waiter. <laughs> yes. Literally, it's like my thing to do because I just have a white glove and I just want things to be as efficient as they possibly can. But I myself am not that, which is what I'm dealing with in therapy. But <laughs> I say that to say that I do have a genuine understanding now more than ever around content creators and it takes a lot of work and if you're doing it every day and it feels like it's engaging and you are seeing some numbers it's not just like vine poo poo shit slash like abs there are people who are really putting themselves out there in a very um deliberate and and uh it almost feels like poetic sometimes like dylan mulvaney is a perfect example she has uh done her 100 days of girlhood i don't know if you know about this anyway but she's been sharing her a sort of like first 100 days of her transition into uh, womanhood and we spoke once and she was very candid about like i don't know how you did that like this is a lot and i was like i know i and but she's doing it by herself so she's having to kind of you're your producer, you're your yep. writer, you're the actor, Lighting and designer. you're the publicist. You're yeah. the guy who's like, okay, you're okay, or the girl. And this goes back to your very first question at the top of the show about, you know, we roll our eyes, but there is talent and skill awesome. that goes into whether you're shooting it all on your iPhone or you've got one of these nice cameras. I mean, you're editing, like you said, you're editing it, you're lighting it, you're shooting and it. And then you get yeah. a sponsorship for it, and then they tell you how to say it. Correct. The, yeah. You know, and all this, and that's like a whole other pressure. And it's also because it's what's happening now, you know? It right. wasn't happening then when you, a thousand years ago when you were born. Or Thank you. Or uh, 3,000 years ago when you were born. Even you know what I mean? better, even better. I was born 5,000 years ago, so don't worry. But I just that, mean like, that puts it's us way that, behind. you know? It's, it's a little bit of like, oh, like, it's when my dad's like, huh, TikTok, what? And I'm like, okay. Even though he's on it, he knows he knows more about Why it probably than I do. Why are you putting that in front of me? Because I thought you need a re re refresh. I'm drinking water at this point. Are you really? Yes. Oh. Well, you know what happens when I come on this show? I know. Halfway through, I have to go to the bathroom because without fail, without with fail, and it's coming soon. <laughs> oh, okay, so <laughs> to um, a theater near you. Uh, there's or another. <laughs> there's another heavy subject I want to bring up, but oh th let's let's save that. Um, what is uh, it? No, bring it up. Come on. No, I want to say. Uh, let, okay, let, okay. Let's take a little breather. I do want to talk about your your beginnings. Um, <laughs> Born in England, went to Miami. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to the toilet. I'm sorry. I, I, I are like you serious? It. Yes, I have a really You don't want to know the beginnings oh, of my life? What's the focus is on, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. How rude. Here's a cup. Cross my no, legs. go to the bathroom. No, no, no. We don't need any Australian no, accents. it's fine. It's fine. No, you know how they do things in Australia. It's I'll like, be right blah, 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 I everywhere. actually don't. Never been there. But you have had this like multicultural past. Um but I want to talk about you started studying the arts at a very early age. Mm -hmm. What did you learn early on? I went. To, I know you went to school of the arts. What did you learn early on in those years of acting school that you still subscribe to today? And you did acting, dance, and led the whole gamut. Yeah, the whole thing. Um, 
like learned in terms of like I mean there's certain things that I learned super early such as like vocally or improv you know certain things that d doesn't matter how old you get no matter how many projects you do you're still going to remember these early rules yeah I mean it's when I was younger I started doing I started dancing when I was two my dad's in the business so he, we grew up in the film industry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, um, but he had been living in London for quite a while. That's where he met my mom, and he had me and my sister. We went to, you know, we did ballet Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Thursday with swimming. We were very active children. And then there was that moment when we moved to the States that it was like, oh, I don't, I would like to be a regular child now, and I don't want to do anything my parents are telling me to do. And uh. especially when you leave a place that is the most opposite from the American culture, and then on top of that, Miami, which is its own country. I love that you use American and culture in the same tense sentence. That was cute. Oh, um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, but, uh, like the arts in America is not such a thing as like you will do sports. You know, you'll learn Spanish, you'll learn a second language, but the culture and art is just like a leftover thing. It's it was funny. yeah. That it w it was. Uh, if I didn't have, if I literally didn't have my dad to, because what happened was, is we stopped being. We we didn't want to do all those other things. I was like, I don't want to swim anymore. I don't want to dance. Just I just want to hang out with friends and assimilate. Like I was like I just want to be like the other kids. Yeah. And I think if I saw my nine year old Excuse self, I'm just doing my yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, don't do that. Like try to literally go do those things and be the best at them and be an Olympic version of all of those things. But anyway, what happened was my dad was like, I think you should go to. Is he pouring something for me or for him? No, it's for you. Oh wow. It's water. I'm helping. Okay. Um. <laughs> is this like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. What's that? Sharp objects? Remember when the mom is like, drink this. What's that called when you, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Patricia Clarkson, Amy Ad um Oh, oh, I did not like that. Sorry. I that's don't care okay. how many award nominations I got. Ugh. No, but what's that called when you like make someone sick and so that they need you? C codependent or no, unhealthy? No, uh, Munchausen by proxy. Yes, that's yes. what was just happening right here. Anyway. <laughs> um, well, sorry, did we talk about me having drugged someone earlier? No. No. Wow. Don't even joke about that. Do we have time for this? <laughs> this is about me, Carl. It's about no, you. Come on. Um, no, but to just, I think like the biggest thing that happened was like the arts saved me because I didn't realize I needed it. Yeah. And I was feeling like a flaily fish, like just out of, like out of water, didn't know what it was going on. And then I joined this art school called Newell School of the Arts, which like changed my life. And it wouldn't have happened unless my dad did the research and was like, I think you should audition for this performing arts high school. That's so crazy because he's usually the dad's like, I'm not paying for any oh, no, but very school. No, yeah, no. Like it, I, I literally grew up in a very, very worldly family. Like mom, it, they just understood that like those things enrich your life. And um, so thanks, dad. But that school started a journey with me about like, oh, like there's this thing I could start to do again. And I started dancing and taking it way more seriously. And the discipline of dance and finding a sort of um, like a mastery of a, a thing again at such a young age, I think really set me up for being m more confident, walking into room, like knowing one thing on top of three lanes. You know, it was yeah. just like, I, I, I really think the arts literally need to be in everybody's life so in how some do, way, how shape, do you or form. feel when you've, see that you know governments not just in this country but around the world are uh, slashing those programs in school and and taking all that stuff away from kids and uh, you know we're seeing kids growing up on ipads with no social skills when you're losing out on those those programs that teach you so much as you said about yourself and about learning how to laugh at yourself n learning that actually if you fail it can be a good thing for you yeah i i mean it obviously like enrages me it makes me sad but like at the same time i want to be like where's wh so if you're cutting and slashing that money like where's that money going like because to buy guns yeah so here's my thing though is and i know we all know this but like if those children were just going and experiencing that art and learning something and Music. expressing themselves humility and it teaches yeah. humility and and you learn to go oh i'd like to contribute in Correct. this way and so you learn you learn at an early age rejection. You know what I mean? It's yes. just like there's so much that happens to you at a young age when you are learning and trying to master a thing. Whether it's swimming, whether it's music, whether it's singing or dancing or acting, it doesn't matter. Art, it's just like, it could literally change that child's, it could change the world. And it does for a lot of us queer kids 
it's the one thing that saves us. Yeah. Well, and look at the uh, look at the industry that saved us all during COVID. Was the entertainment industry? Whether it was music that was being released, whether it was a new show on Netflix, whether it was whether TikTok, it was people, or whether Chris it was and TikTok, Ian. yeah, or whether it was Just, well, on you. whether it was a younger generation <laughs> that had nothing else to watch, so they watched some old school Hollywood films, right. or they watched some Stephen Sondheim's material, or they watched Hamilton on or TV, or they watched yeah. On the Rocks with Alexander. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Parents don't let this, except on the East Coast, apparently. Yeah. Four times a week. Thank you, Channel Thirty One. <laughs> That's the most you get normally in a week, isn't it? Oh, yeah. wow. I got At least I get I some, got... Carl. Wow. <laughs> Listen. Um, so I want to fast forward right after Ladies. graduation. Uh -huh. Right after graduation, <laughs> you, you book your Broadway show. Uh -huh. um, you did three shows, Soul Doctor, Leap of Faith, Mamma Mia. What sh uh, do you remember your Broadway debut? Of course, every kid that studied the arts, it's, it's Broadway. It's like first night. Do you remember what was going through your mind, opening night? You, you Which know, show was it? Like, Mamma Mia. Ah. I joined Mamma Mia, and... My parent, I remember my, it was October 18, 2000, 2009, 2008, 2009. I think it was 2009 because I had just graduated that year. Um, After and, West Side Story. Yes, yes. So I had just graduated and I went on tour with West Side in London and Germany and it was amazing. Uh, I played Arab, like bucket list role, just like a crazy moment that you just, I just won't ever get that again. Yeah. And I performed it at Sadler's Wells, where I saw my first show ever because uh, I grew up there. And full I, circle. It was and that's crazy. A full on, yeah. that, I mean, if you're in the dance world, that theater is, yeah. is kind of like if you're an opera singer performing at the Met in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, but that happened. And I remember this is a, a little anecdote on how I even got to Broadway. But I found out while I was in Athens doing Mama Me, uh, doing West Side, it was the last leg of that tour. And I, I was getting emails from my agent to be like, hey, like, we can you call us as soon as you can? And I thought, I was like, oh, they're just going to tell, tell me, like, I don't have an audition for Hamilton. Or, like, Andy doesn't want to see you. I don't remember. But yeah. I was just like, I'll call you later. And I didn't have, like, a worldwide plan. And then it was like one – I got this email once. I was like, can you really need to call us? Can you ask one of your castmates to, like, use a phone? So I asked my friend Jen Locke. I was like, hey, can I – I know you have a world – like, worldwide phone. Can I borrow it? And so we had just done ballet class because you had to take ballet class every day, and it was mandatory before West Side. And I called the agents, and they were like, hi. Oh, my God. Hello. So nice to fucking hear from you. Um, would, 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 how are you? What's going on? Blah, blah. Mama Mia would like to offer you a spot in their show. And I was like, what? And they were like, Mamma Mia, on Broadway, would like to offer you a role, blah, blah, blah. And my friend Julian was standing right in front of me, who was playing Chino. And I like, I like, literally like couldn't believe what I said. I was like, I, just, I think I should have Mamma Mia on Broadway. And like more stunned than that, though. And then he like walked away, and then I was getting more He's info. probably like, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, congratulations. Well, but that, he, literally, Shoot me too, Maria. <laughs> he, walked, he walked away. <laughs> I turned my head down, and I was like getting info for a second. And then I look back up. My entire cast is in front of me. Literally like Anita, all the, Bebecita, literally everybody. And it was one of those moments I will always remember because I was in Athens, in Greece, learning about a show I was about to play, which takes place in Greece. Which so I insane. how old were you then? Um, I think I was like twenty, right. twenty-one. I mean, that's huge. It was crazy. It was crazy. But like that moment was really, really cool. I was the happiest jet that's that so night. Real. Yeah. Like no angry <laughs> Arab, the happiest jet. I was like, ha. Ah. Um, but then we got there. So opening night, all of that to say, my parents were there. Mm. They saw, because it was there for like a week, and I think it was like a Wednesday matinee. They saw both of those shows. And I was like excited, but I was also like nervous because more so my parents were there. It was yeah, just like, I didn't cute. care about anyone else mm. audience wise, but it was just like, they're seeing me do a thing for the first time ever. And that was really, really special. Um, but I felt really prepared. Um, uh, do, are your parents um, good critics, or or do you have one parent like my mom? She would come and see stuff, and she go, she'd pull all the bad stuff first, and I would go, could you not just say it was a good show? <laughs> Maybe this? No, no, no. My and I love your mom. No, I do uh, you know how close I am? Yeah, the same exactly. Thing. Her, that was her way of love because she's yes. like, that was great. But here's blah, yeah, blah, no, blah, no, blah. I didn't even get that's great. I just got well, I would this well, one could have been better. But, yeah, well. Wow. It's how they share. It's how they communicate. But do you have a parent sure. like that? I, I do actually. <laughs> my, my it's the Latina. It, no, actually, <laughs> oh, my not. mom is just like, oh, that was so great, wonderful. Oh, my uh -huh. God, I was so happy to see you. My dad is the one who, like, if I call with a new job, and because he's the one, he's the one telling me about auditions. Your he's dad like, is so invested in you, and I love so it. Invested. But he understands I love the that. business side of it too. He, he he's does. Like, How much? Probably. He's like reading variety and he like he is no that's he so knows cute. about every show that's coming six months before I do. So like I get the one up on most things because he's telling me about it first. But one of the things that he does, which isn't a pet peeve, but I'm just always like LOL, because it's such a dadager thing to do. A dadager. Very, yeah. Or Mama Rose. 
is it'll be like, oh, so what are you doing in this one? Is it ensemble still? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, Dad. It is, but I'm covering blah, 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 blah. He's like, okay. No, that's great. That's great. It, it's never – I'm sounding way more condescending no, right. or, like, up, upset, but it's it's a genuine, Please like, understand. is are you a principal? Because he just sees it for me so much yes. more clearly than I do. Really? Which I think is, like, really – yeah, sometimes – Well, that's his job, though. Exactly. And that's one of the – And that's such a nice thing, though, to say, because you don't hear this version – that often it's yeah. normally the mom it's mom it's mom D especially for us gay boys mm -hmm. dad is sort of keeps a safe distance and even more so if it comes to theater or the arts oh, no. so to I hear mean, to hear this is so refreshing and and so nice yeah no I've, i i really he can annoy the shit out of me sometimes because he can be it can be just business in that way like the way he's sharing his love i'm just like can i just get like affection you know what i yeah. mean can it can it can it that's can his it, affection. And, and I know. Yeah. And that is one of the things that, like, one day when he's not here, I am going to miss yeah. those moments. And I I literally, like, it's it's my favorite thing about him. And it can also, like, make you roll your eyes. But that's... That's love. Exactly. Exactly. That's and love, that's why right? I love him so much. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> what show did you learn the most from? Ooh. This one. Mamma Mia, honestly. Yeah. Mamma Mia was, I, I joke, and but I'm very serious. It was like Broadway college for me because I was cocky as fuck. Mm -hmm. and Not like, oh, I don't belong you here. You had just like, done a tour of West Side Story with yeah, the top dancers. And, yeah, and, you know. I just, I was just like, I, you know, I, I was, I thought I was on top of the world. I was taking dance class every day. I was in the show. I wanted to audition. I was just like, nothing can you stop were young. me. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Were. Keep doing, I mean, you what, know. Do that but, again. But, just do that one more time. With the, no, 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 with the, the spirit were, fingers. You were young. Um, That's why I order it in and out. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe rethink it. Protein style, or what are they call it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I pretend I know. Animal style? Mm -hmm. I yeah. like an animal style. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. See, you are all dirty people with your minds in the gutter. You're right. Sorry. That was me. Well, and you know, a lot of uh, younger people come to Mamma Mia. We've uh, Mamma Mia, that show has given birth to some of the best actors on TV film. That's yes. been a learning ground for a lot of them. Yeah. But a lot of people say, oh, it's Mamma Mia, it's ABBA songs, it's a fun show. It's it a did, demanding it, show. It was a demanding show in, in a very different way because it really, it, it like brought out a lot of joy in people. People jumped up off of their seats. Even non-theater goers. Well, like, yeah. that was their but theater. is there pressure when you do a show like that because it is ABBA and they are so huge and so beloved and so well known so you're you're performing the story and you're performing their songs and abba fans are hardcore fans is there an added pressure on top of what you're doing when I, it's that i wonder if that maybe that might have been a little bit more present when it first opened because i, I joined so. like eight years after right. it had already been around in that way and everybody's seen the, the movie and like tapping their yeah, feet yeah, and, yeah yeah and so like i maybe but like no i don't that was never something that we were worried about in the theater at all um, but to just answer your question, like I just learned a lot about being on an eight show a week schedule for a long period of time. That was that's just something you only learn. If Party you life do is it. out. Yeah. It's just like you're you're a bit of a monk. I mean, yeah. not if you're some of my other castmates, but like, well, I have a follow up question. <laughs> OK. Uh, during which show did you have the most <clears throat> backstage shenanigans? Ooh, wow. Wow. I've heard about that Mamma Mia cast. It's like, how'd, Mia, how'd you guys walk listen, on stage? This, listen to me. Mamma Mia was, we had, we sang in, in, in um, sound booths in the back because we did all the backups. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's just, there was no place like that backstage experience because we all Those were- dark booths backstage. No, I've just, heard some Mamma Mia We stories. were just like, we just had so much fun. We like- Did things happen in the booth? Like in what sense? I'm talking about in like the sense that he, that he like, was suggesting. Like, okay, which show did you maybe hook up with the most- Castmates. <laughs> oh, and well you roll your eyes at me for asking questions. There was no time for that. I don't, it doesn't have to be like during the show. Oh, but like, well, that's happening everywhere. Right, but which show had the most cast members that you? Boop, 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 boop. Oh, for me specifically. Yep. Um, well, clarify. Form another. Clarify. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. He's barely touched that one. You know, interestingly enough, Ian's, I'm pretty, ve Ian's very professional. I'm, I believe that. I, listen, I like. I believe that. I like. I definitely I get dick though. brain and like all of a sudden do? I don't know how to focus definitely but when it comes to like when it comes to workplace that is a place where I'm just like I don't like to mess with that so much because I have to eat and sleep there you know what I mean when you're doing eight shows a week you're there all the time and it's just not the place that you want to like mess in your backyard yeah but I'll be someone's uh, soundboard for what's whatever's going on for them and help them and, and life, as long probably as it's life not coach in them your backyard it. it's fine. <laughs> 
I'll get <laughs> out of the got a pair of you. <laughs> Uh, okay, we're going to do some rapid fire style. Yeah. And then oh, we're gonna that end means on, the on show's nearly over. Uh, almost. Uh, what's the type of TikTok or viral video that you would love to do, but your fans probably wouldn't understand or engage with? Ooh. Um, this actually comes from, from one of your fans, this question. That I, that I don't think they would engage with? Like, what's a video like, God, I yeah, wish yeah, I could yeah. do that, but no. But I don't feel it's on brand. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a better way to wow, put wow, it. Wow, I wow, wow, be your wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Rapid fire. Um... Is it weird that I think like if I just fi- sat down and did it, like I could and it would be fine? Yeah. But um, that's actually what I think. Hmm. That's my answer. Okay. All it's right. just about sitting down and doing it. Is it hard to date right now because people want to date Ian from TikTok and not Ian, the real person? Uh, n- no, because I'm I'm not really looking for that in that way. But I guess when I start to, if that's what it's seems like i'll call you and let you know Be, you know what i mean like i'm i i yeah i haven't had that experience mm. like but again i'm in a very big like self-discovery like fo- refocusing on my relationship with me um because i wasn't focusing on that for the last couple two Good years for you. um but interesting i don't know that's that's quite a that's quite a question because that would mean that like i'm someone in some way you know what i mean and like i don't know i'm well, just I mean, still i'm still me Right, but still, like we've had comedians come on and they're like, well, people want go on a date and they're like, okay, I'm with comedians. Like, tell the be, joke, be funny, yeah, uh, make, make me laugh. And it's like, well, I'm not that person. I'm, 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 I'm me. Morbidly I, I, depressed. Oh, I see like, what you're, you're saying. You're not walking in the restaurant doing your dance and like sitting in your chair. You know I what I mean? See, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, maybe I am. Though. Well, but you're not like in a good mood all the time either. Do you that's, know what I mean? I for sure. I that's one of the things that is I think the hardest thing I've had to do is is come to terms with like, oh, like there's a sassy, much more direct version of me that people don't know about and. You know, it's like not everyone's going to get that. Well, there's also the being, sorry, I know it's rapid fire, but there's being on, which we all have to do in the capacity of what we do for a living. And people, especially in the dating world, see you and they you you make a good impression on the first couple of dates because you're on. Mm -hmm. And when you get relaxed and into it and suddenly you don't want to be on because you've been on all day, they go, is everything okay? See, I like to ruin it on the first date because if you can't handle (laughs) this, then then it's not going to work out because you're going to find out about it third or fourth time or whatever. You're You're living your truth. You're living your truth. 100%. Thank you, Carl. You're welcome. That's naturally also happening with just dating in general. Anybody, yes. You go, oh, I've plugged an idea. If Panda Express is your favorite place to go, let's go there on a first date. Please tell me that off the bat. I once got food poisoning from a Panda Express at JFK Airport. That's impossible. They have so many preservatives. <laughs> it's a very uncomfortable Delta flight home. Oh, oh, wow. God. Mm, but you're first class, so that's fine. <clears throat> uh, so we're going to get to the heavy question, but I want to talk about the Oscars. Both of you were at the Oscars from a very oh, yeah. unique uh, perspective, shall we say. Um, Ian, who were you most surprised by the way that they acted, good or bad? Because you got to see them in a very different uh-huh. light i was gonna yeah find the words rose yeah um <laughs> <laughs> you, um rose is like a term of endearment that's a Just thing i learned mm-hmm. at mamma mia by the way uh and i'm the rose usually of the group anyway um i think the person i was most surprised i mean this person really everyone's always like what that's so random but when kevin costner walked by me i know i get it but like I grew up watching Robin Hood and I grew up watching The Bodyguard and he just lives in a place like if Harrison Ford walked by me, same deal. I'm there the same with I, Harrison Ford. I, 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 I agree get that with, that. with Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still to this day. It's just Even though we know Harrison Ford's a bit of a jerk. Well, no, but, uh, but nice to me. I tell you, you want to know who's a real jerk? they're just walking by. Right it's not like I was having conversation with them. But like Kevin Costner, and I was like, oh my God, like, that's Kevin Costner. Because he's a, a movie star, right? Yes. A real movie star. Yes. 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 As but, is Harrison. Um, I... Oh, and to our audience, I might not know. You were actually backstage right after like they won the award and they talked to the press. Like you were backstage. Oh. He had better access than me, and I was on the network that broadcasts the show. <laughs> but you get to see them coming in where they're still refreshed and they're being polite and, and all of that. And then I get to see them at the Vanity Fair that's party. Why, that's <laughs> why I wanted your right. opinions because you saw them from very different perspectives. Yes, I did. I got. I, I mean, I did get to see them walking in, and that was really fun. Nicole Kidman like waved at me, which literally oh, like cute. hi Nicole. Yeah. Um, you I know, love her. I love her. Love. Her. Um, and I had a moment with Rosie Perez because she was standing, I don't know, seven feet away from me, and I was just like Rosie, and she turned around, and I told her how beautiful she looked, and she was like, thank you, and it, and it's it's on a reel, if you can find it on my Insta. Uh, but like those were cool, very you know interesting yeah. moments that like. It was like Christmas Day for me. The Oscars has literally always been like that favorite that favorite day. Talk about it like another childhood dream, and like you can check that off. Oh my God! No, who was like, mm, I don't need really need to see them again. Uh, Michael Keaton. Oh, sorry. 
No one. I didn't. I didn't I feel didn't like you were gonna chime in. Really? Yeah. I've heard about Mr. Keaton. I yeah. You you have another a story. icon. Though. I have several. Do you know who I was most excited to see at the Oscars? And this is legit. Ian, because I hadn't seen him for years, and suddenly he walks past me on the carpet, and I'm like, "Hello!" Oh, you yeah. didn't stop and like acknowledge him. You're like, mm. "No, no, I no, sure we did. we took I a picture." I saw him. Yeah, he, yeah. I, well, cute. I screamed out your That's name cute. like a fan. You know, and did this you? is something about yes. I was like, "Ian!" Oh and my then you God. That's attractive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his medical. <laughs> Oh, that's it was it was like dress rehearsal we were, like before. Yes, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the Saturday. Yes. This is what I love, and this is what I love about you. Um, there's also another pandemic in our community is that we don't want other people to succeed because we feel this weird jealousy. What I love about you is that you are so supportive. It's like so when you see each other, you're generally happy for each yes. other. It's like if we were all to do that and all help each other succeed, then oh we're all gosh. gonna succeed. Literally. And can I, that, let Literally. and that happens in the influencer world a lot. It's well, like, oh, you don't have to make nasty comments. And with your cocktail spin, let me just give you a moment because you've always been very complimentary to me on the show. And uh, uh, but you work your tail off in researching and preparing. And I sit in awe of you when I come on the show because you're so prepared and you are I mean, so no, but you're, you're the so consummate. no, I, but not compared. To, you're so dedicated and you, the, you take this so personally in a good way. And uh, I watch you. You work so hard, and you not just pandemic. You've had other things going on in your family, and I tip my head to you. And and I le whenever you say come and be on the show, I'm like, it's the minute I can get there because. I, I think you're I, you're so good and you don't get the kudos and the credit you deserve God, you're and so you put sweet. and you put I know it's un, I don't know what it's, to do it's with unusual neither do I who am I it's all that vulgar no but I want to you, you do and you're 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 paying me a compliment about lifting people up but you do that by putting on this show every week you bring people in and you bring such an interesting and diverse mix of people whether it's porn stars or sex workers or, or Tippy Hedron or, or Tippy Hedron and yeah. I don't know why I pointed at you when I said Tippy Hedron my hand just but Kudos to you because that's a thing too. And you're giving other people that are sometimes heavily stigmatized if we talk about sex work and porn and you're giving them a platform to be themselves and show their true selves. And that is a big, that's a really admirable thing. Well, thank you. It's because I am passionate about entertainment. Have I disarmed I love, you now? I, well, I mean, it's, it's a, <laughs> a little shy of like stuttering. But it's, I love entertainment so much, and I can't you saturate do. enough of it. So when I get to meet people that are movers and shakers in any different genre, it's exciting to me. And what I've learned from interviewing every type of person is everybody has a passion, and we're all on the same journey. We have a lot of similarities that we don't even realize, mm -hmm. whether it's a porn star next to Academy Award winner, next to a Tony Award winner, next to a WWF wrestler. There's some similarities that we all have on this right. journey. We all have obstacles, and so if we can communicate and help Correct. each other through these obstacles, then it'll be a much happier. And place. I always say, look, we c if we can have a discussion, we don't have to agree, right? But if we can have a conversation about something, maybe both of us walk away with something that like, we didn't mm. think was possible, right. and that's all it takes to affect. Sorry to get bigger and deeper, but no. that's all it does to affect change. Whether it's how you view someone. I'll, you know, selfishly because of their HIV status or their color or their religion or who they love. It's just a conversation and we don't always have to agree, but at least we talked about it and maybe we took one little grain mm -hmm. of somebody else's perspective and went, huh, let me sit on that and think about it. We had a panel. It was you, um, somebody from American Horror Story. Yes. Um, a, a straight guy and then a porn star. Yes. And that I got a comment from one of the other people on the panel saying, uh, I'm with a porn star. I, I don't know about that. And then by the end, we were all talking about these hot topics besties and i was like god we really do have a lot in common we Where at do first it was like ah, i don't know if i want to sit next to him i'm like why it's why so we dumb. all like sex it's not like come he's on gonna fuck you by sitting next to you well, well. he wouldn't anyway <laughs> uh, okay so this is this is a, a topic i want to talk about um it has to do with kind of what you're doing with plus life media uh, i want to talk about the queer's folk reboot spoiler alert uh. one of the characters uh present day uh learns that they've contracted hiv a uh, very young kid. He's very emotional about Thanks it. Doesn't want to tell anyone. Me. But I didn't say who. There's a lot of young oh, kids in it. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, hey, he doesn't want to tell anyone about it. Um, uh, he starts taking his meds because those are the services that are available to young kids. When he tells his mom, she laughs and then cries and then laughs and says, "Oh God, I thought you were going to tell me you were dying." Um, I have mixed feelings about that. Yes, our younger generation has no idea what it was like to live in a time where people were literally dropping like flies right. around you. Um, because of AIDS and HIV. But is this kind of statement also making our youth thinking that getting HIV is no biggie, or is it helping to remove the stigma? I feel torn. Well, I, I think kudos to um, the show. I, we need to stop 
showing HIV as the big bad wolf and the death sentence. And look, a lot of we don't ever want to not acknowledge the hell that was happening 41 years ago, but uh, we need to move beyond HIV as sort of the victim and the and the and the downer story, right? Um, because that's not what HIV has to be anymore. And so by having proper representation where we see people thriving and just, oh, just so happens I'm HIV positive. But, you know, much like what the, you know, what modern storylines are starting to do, that destigmatizes in itself. What we see on television in these programs so often still looks back at 1984. I will give kudos to the guys at Pose, who I think did a phenomenal job. Um, and, and I, you know, reached out to several of them personally and have had them on Plus Life to say thank you for making HIV a character in of itself. And yes, you were showing the darkest time of HIV, but you also showed the resilience and the strength and people going, I'm not going to be beaten by this. And we need to we need to get beyond that. I, I see your point. You're saying, are we are we trivializing HIV? Oh, you just take a pill now, or you just take your shot. And the trauma of getting that diagnosis. This is what I love to see but, but, this with a young kid, because there is a trauma, no matter how serious sure or not. It's is, not just take a pill. No, but 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 you know what? That yes, there is a trauma, but the trauma is there because of the stigma. We still that's where the trauma is. I I'm not trying to sort of advocate to go out and get HIV by any means. I mean, we've got and wonderful that's what things. I'm afraid like, of is that the youth are not taking precautions, not just for HIV, but for, for other things. Well, and that's the thing. You know, we've got PrEP now, which is a phenomenal drug that, by the way, is not just for gay men. Women should be taking it too if they if they're protected. If they're, if they're because we know men are everywhere on the Kinsey scale, and men are right. But 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 a lot of women don't actually think they can take PrEP. They just think it's a, a pill for dudes. That is not the case. Women can take PrEP, and it's. And it's a, you know it's like a form of birth control really in a sense. Look, if you're going to have condomless sex, let's be honest about things. Take responsibility for your own sexual health, right? If you're going to have sex without condoms, then you are opening the door to STIs, and that's part of it, right? If you ride a motorbike and don't and wear a not, helmet, none of us are saints. Like we oh all. Oh my you know. god, I've had every single one, and let me tell you that gonorrhea <laughs> shot, the syphilis shot, really hurts. So, um, but but here's the thing. I, I say this all the time. I've said it to you. The one thing that connects all of us is sex, right? Everybody. I every you were going to say gonorrhea. Well, <laughs> sometimes. But everybody does it. I just wonder if we were to connect the dots here. <laughs> everybody does it. Everybody likes it. And we're all here because two people had sex. So why can't we talk about it? The stigma and the shame. But to the point of we don't want to trivialize anything. But we also need to get to a point where nobody should walk into a clinic like I did at 27 years old and then walk out of that clinic 45 minutes later and instantly think, what have I done to my parents? And that's it. Mm. No, one should, no one should be made to feel that way because they had sex with somebody. I mean, they had an hour, five minutes, three minutes, I don't know, but you know, with someone or a group of people. It's the most natural thing we can do. And yet we stigmatize it and, and somehow bring shame and make us all feel dirty for doing the one thing that comes as natural as breathing and farting. So, I don't know. I don't think shows like that trivialize it. I don't... I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's like, oh, you know, she's laughing about it, that it's like, it's fine. Yeah, but I think that's a really positive message, especially if you're a young gay guy and you're terrified. Look, we, you know, we all come out as gay. I'll never forget. I came out as gay and my mother said, the one thing she said was, okay, but just promise me you won't get AIDS. Well... Uh, you know, I didn't get AIDS, but tick, well done me, top score. But to see on television a mother s laugh and go, oh, my God, I thought you were going to tell me you're dying, that's a really powerful message for people. And we need to start seeing more of that versus, oh, my God, you've got AIDS, you're going to die, or you're a, you, you're, you're a drug abuser and it's all doom and gloom and all of 100%. that. 100%. I think a lot of the material that came out during COVID was so heavy. It's like, hey, we're depressed on, on our own. And it was it was all about either the coming out experience was so awful or everybody was dying. But I think we're shifting away from that, Alexander. I think when you look now, um, thankfully, a lot of the content where we're seeing queer representation, you know, yes, they're queer and that's Thank you, and we get on with it. It's not It's not necessarily a coming out story or a this or a that. I mean, we have Hallmark movies now. Right. Like, that's it, insane it, to me. Yeah, but and thank God. 
So I don't know. I, 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 I see your point, and I've heard that I've had this discussion a lot. People going, well, now you just take a pill or whatever, and so a lot. And I've of, heard this from young generations. Yeah, and too. a lot like, of and a, a lot more than that. Well, and the flip, the bad side is what that does is it makes people think that HIV doesn't matter anymore. I think that's that, that's right. where I'm, I'm I'm going. Right. And we, Gilead, I, I can't see one more HIV prep commercial on Drag Race and watching Queer as Folk. Well, it needs to be on mainstream TV. Well, to your point, no, it's like and, everybody but, needs to see no, these commercials. No, well, watch ABC7 because I can tell you we run Bictavi commercials all the time, and that's the drug no, I take. ABC, like you guys have been a leader, obviously televising right. Pride for the first time. Well, ABC's been phenomenal. I mean, yes. I told you, we, we talked about this. I got to stand a few years ago on the Oscars and say that I was HIV positive and then run a package about, you know, HIV positive characters in film. Like, that was phenomenal for 30 million people around the world. Well, that's a whole other discussion is who's portraying these characters. But yes. that's a whole other discussion. Anyway. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the exciting thing uh, that I feel this pride is that I haven't just had people on the show just saying, agree, agree, agree. We're having these conversations in a respectful way. Mm -hmm. And the minute we stop asking questions, even if we think it's stupid, to our non-binary friends, to our trans community, to our black community, to other minority communities, we have to stop being so afraid of asking questions mm -hmm. but we and have instead be communicate. But we've become so afraid because everyone is... Everybody's cancel, cancel, well, cancel. Cancel and... and I think Especially in your world. Yeah, you know? but we use this word, we throw this word judgmental out and about. And it's kind of this popular thing to go, well, I don't judge. Well, okay, fine, but you can have. We all judge but you, well, by the way. but you can also have an opinion, right? And it, it may not be the general consensus. But leading to your point, I have an opinion that happens to differ from yours. Let's have a conversation, and right. maybe we'll both walk away having learned something that we didn't think about before. Mm -hmm. That that's that's having an opinion, but we're very quick, especially in our community, especially here in LA. To go, you're a judgy bitch. No. I, in my opinion, if I go up to you and say something that makes you feel like shit, yeah, that's judgmental and that's mean. But if I say something to a friend, go, ah, and I'm and it passing. Makes you it. think. Yes. You know, I, I, I'm a journalist and I write for a print Much magazine. Much better than me because uh, you do. You've got better spelling. No, but I'm, I'm talking about writing. But we do. We have to put. Uh, because our distribution is national, we have to wrap up. Everything has to be wrapped up a month and a half before the issue hits, right. which means I'm doing the interview maybe two months ahead. So I interviewed uh, somebody that had different pronouns. So when the article came out, it had wrong pronouns. It's in print. There's nothing I can do about right. it. The hate, the upset, even from their PR, I'm like, y everybody knew what we were dealing with. Right. And – it was so awful. Instead of saying, you know what, this is a great opportunity for another article and a follow-up interview mm. to say, hey, this is the evolution. This is how a journalist like me needs to learn. Of course. And how we can move on from that rather than, oh, my God, it was the worst thing ever. I got hate Your email. evil cancel, you right. stupid. And then they get personal and nasty about it. And even the person themselves. Yeah. And I, that's what I don't understand. It's like I'm trying the best that I can, and we're all trying. Hopefully, we're all trying. Yeah. Look, I, d I think to, to learn. I I, l I would like to believe that most of us go about not wanting to hurt other people and make other people feel like shit. Now we can also, I, and I'm the king of saying sometimes the mouth runs quicker than the brain. Hundred percent. Right. I think we make it from like a funny, sassy place. No, though. but yeah, well, most of the time. But I I don't ever go about going. You know what? I'm going to say something to really hurt their feelings. I and I don't think that is like that for any of us. I think as human beings, we're compassionate people. Like, and we understand when somebody's being malicious, and we understand when somebody's just being. But uneducated. we're so quick to yes. jump on the bandwagon of judgmentalness at these days. I'm sure even people watching this, I, I can't wait to read the comments of what people think about me and what I'm saying about this. But, but it seems like, especially in this country of which I'm a proud citizen now so I feel I can make these comments a little bit more. <laughs> you, you're not allowed to have an opinion that differs from everybody else's. Now, it's one thing to be hateful in the terms of racism and a lot of things that happen in this country, right? But, it, you know, if I was to say, you know, I don't like, you know, the color of these blue curtains and the blue LED lights, kind of trashy, and I said, that's not me judging you, that's me just going, I don't really like the blue lights on the wall. But you also have different restrictions, though. You have a network. You have a mainstream network but behind I you as I, but well. But, but you even have sponsors but even for your material. Life. You guys have different restrictions. Sure, but I mean, I it, but it goes whether it's for work or whether it's a personal thing, you know. And again, I just think it comes back to, you know, we can have differing opinions, and the best way to kind of get beyond them or learn is to talk to somebody talk. versus blocking them. 
-hmm. Yeah. On that note, this is what I love about uh, this Pride Month is we've been having these conversations. Um, so I'm I'm very very excited. Uh, Carl, I can, can tell. <laughs> Girl, yes. um, Can you share your <laughs> message to your fans for this Pride season and tell everybody where they want or where you want them to find you and follow you? Oh well, that's uh, uh, no. I Are you on Grinder, by the way? I got this question from somebody. I was a mutual friend. No, by the I'll way. tell you that's what. That's a good save. I got this question from somebody. I like that. No, it's actually from our mutual friend. Oh, no, okay. I I. I was briefly on it and I gotten rid of it again because to your to what we've been discussing there are there's a lot of sort of angry and sort of a grinder yeah and bitter people out there and so I got one or two um rather unpleasant and slightly threatening messages and I just went uh, threatening me with silliness saying well I'm, I think ABC would be very happy to hear oh, about that's, this that's kind of so behavior wrong. and I think well that's nice you don't have a picture and you don't have any information about yourself but clearly you know who I am and I sort of took the moment and went do I really want to put up with this yeah. and and I will tell you this I <laughs> I normally use grinder these days when I travel internationally and it's it's the best well and it's but even to find friends to go well, out that, to that's, what I'm, that's what I'm yes, talking about I'm yes, not yes. using it as a hookup I, I I find that you know you know my best friend Chris and I travel and we're in Myanmar and I get on Grinder. I go hey where do the guys go on a Thursday night and like, room 69 <laughs> <laughs> but so but no I don't have that anymore I I think my message for people during this pride season is um just be nice to each other it doesn't you know it, it, we've got to be more patient. And I, I, I have to learn this especially, 100%, right? 100%. We've got to be more patient and a little bit more understanding and not so quick to, as I, we talk about judgmental, but, but to sort of go, Ugh, I can't be bothered with this drama. Because as you've pointed out several times during the show with COVID and everything and, and all of us feeling just a little more isolated and then you look at the bigger things that are happening in the world, whether it's, you know the the gun thing or the abortion thing or what's happening in the Ukraine, etc. Um, it it wouldn't hurt us to just take a beat and listen to each other mm. and 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 be a little kinder. So that would be that would be uh, my message. If people want to find me, it's at Carl J Schmidt. Oh, there it's on the screen at Carl J Schmidt um, across all. I made it easy across all social platforms, and we're also uh, at Plus Life Media is Plus Life, so you can find us there. Here, here. Ian, what is your yeah. message to your fans? Oh my God, um, I think to like my young fans, any LGBTQ plus family members, I would just say, f find your voice and contribute. Don't, uh, not don't, but like if if you have people around who light you up and who want to bring more, who help bring more of you out, be around those people and find a way to contribute in the world because that is the only way that. The world will change. Yeah, I love it. I like that. And What's where do you yours? want people to find you? And, know, and, and we'll get to you in a minute. Hmm. One more time. What did you say? W where do you want people to find you and follow you? Carl. Um, uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram at Ian Paget, and then on TikTok it's at Ian Paget underscore. Awesome. What's awesome. your message? Uh, my message is to find the humor in everything. Oh yes, and, and just keep going and, and drink Neft Neft vodka. vodka. <laughs> And a huge thank you. Uh, th my message is a huge thank you to friends yeah. that continually to be there through the ups and downs in our career. You know, we all have ups and downs. Yeah. Oh and boy. it's very interesting, especially in L.A., to see who sticks around you. And, yes. you know, we and all have. You know what? And to piggyback on that, I would also say, like, make friends with many, many different people other than yourselves. Like, don't just be friends with LGBTQI plus people. Have have a diverse group of friends around yes. you and and explore the world and try new things because that is also the only way you yourself are going to grow yeah. and learn about how much you don't know. And don't be afraid to fail. Exactly. And also with the friendship though, it's also- <laughs> You gotta <laughs> have like, the last back, word. No, it's no. his show, well, Ian, well, I mean. you know Mine what? is on the marquee. Fine, fine, but fine. it's also, also understand when a friend is not a friend. Yeah. And when you're not, not that we do things just to get things back, but in LA, I think we're so afraid to be alone or Correct. to lose a certain friend. It's like, you know what? If we're on a path and people are not on that path or they're not appreciative of what we're giving, it's time to, to, to move on to something that, that will. Yeah, well, and let, yeah. Them, let them hang on if they want to. Yeah. I, I read a quote once and it said, if it comes, let it, and if it goes, let it. I'm leaving that alone. I read that on the wall at Motherlode. <coughs> it's a bar. <laughs> Never mind. 
Oh, God, Carl. Anyway, my big thank either. you to everybody. I just love Pride Month here on On the Rocks. I want to thank um, our studio audience. And our studio audience. We have like a mini audience here. Yes. So attractive. Uh, and that's all, folks. It's a grab bag of fun every week on The Rocks. You never know who's going to show up. Uh, big thank you to our fabulous guest, my guest co host, our engineer and owner, Tony Sweet, mm. our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez, Mama Rose. Mama Rose is fighting how this is, good how, fight. is, how is Mama Rose doing? She went outside for the first time since before Christmas. She went out, she was outside for about 15 minutes. And uh, she did that on, on Father's Day. Which and she quickly went, ep- ep- put me back inside. Well, she has certain restrictions, yeah. but yeah. But, uh, so she, she's doing that. Uh, coming up, we have Broadway powerhouse Tony Award winner Jerry Mitchell is here. <gasps> we also have you got Jerry Mitchell. He owes me an interview. Well, he's here next week. Really? Mm-hmm. Thank Can you, you Jerry. Right uh, we also have members of the cast of the new touring production of Dear Evan Hansen. They're coming in. We also have choreographer and performer Bobby Newberry, who has Ooh. worked with Eminem, Come Missy Elliott, Nick Min- Nicki Minaj, and Lil Wayne. Also, we have some Bravo TV surprises in store um so you just have to stay tuned please like share subscribe so continue bringing this fabulous programming for free until next time stay happy stay healthy stay sexy and more importantly stay tipsy Sasa. this has been another episode of on the rocks tweet me and slide into my dms on twitter and instagram at on the rocks on air find everything on the rocks for free at on the rocks radio show.com subscribe like review and share until next